All right, hey everybody. Thanks again for joining us for another live stream. Uh, we are Talking Cardboard, and again, we are joined by Sam Healy from Mythic Games. And we are, we are playing uh, their new title, Hell, um, the second scenario this time. Uh, we didn't record the last one, so we're recording it this time for you all. And uh, really excited to play it. We had a great time last time, so we're looking to dive right into this one. And yeah, looking forward to it. So, Sam, yeah. you kind of want to just take it away from the top? All right, we'll do. Um, well, basically, uh, I'll give a little bit of an explanation of what happened in the last scenario. The last scenario was our um, kind of expedition style scenario where we start off with a certain uh, board layout and we read through the introduction and it gives us the idea of what's happening. The last scenario, we were actually making our first landfall in this new island that uh, we are being uh, led to by our soothsayer, so to speak. We are supposed to be meeting our king, Hawken, and his and the members of the original expedition that uh, left about a year ago. And so now we're with the last uh, introductory scenario, the first part of the scenario, we made landfall, we ran into some indigenous creatures. Uh, I don't, don't know for sure that they're actual people or not, but um, that is what we did. We had to kind of fight our way through a forest uh, with some surprises here and there thrown in there. Um, but we actually, uh, all four of our characters made it all the way to the end and we were able to move on. Uh, we found a path that led to the original expedition's uh, campsite or uh, so to speak. So now we're going back to the shoreline to uh, guide our uh, Drakkar into more, uh, a little bit more of a safe harbor. And uh, we're going to take everybody uh, into the campsite now uh, to see what awaits us, to see if we can find out what's happening with the original expedition. So that's pretty much where we are as far as the um, scenarios are concerned. This is the second half of the introductory scenario. Uh, this shows off a little bit more of the camp scenario that uh, makes up there's expedition scenarios and then there's camp scenarios the camp scenarios have a little bit more of a um, resource management vibe to it there's going to be a lot of different things happening within the village where we can uh, build new buildings that will help us do different things there's going to be a little bit of a tower defense type feel to them as well because while we're trying to accomplish certain things throughout the scenario there are going to be things attacking from the outside um, of the board. So there's a little bit of a tower defense feel to it where we need to kind of um, protect certain people or certain buildings or something to that effect, still being, uh, uh, still accomplishing certain objectives uh, and holding off uh, the, the, the people that are, or the things rather, we don't know if they're people or not, um, that are attacking us. So, with that, there's a couple of different things that uh, we want to explain. Uh, there's basically two cores to the game. And if you understand those two cores, then everything else kind of just falls into place. And those two cores are the uh, campaign board, and then there's, all, or rather the scenario board, and then there's also the player board. The player boards are your main interaction with the game as, as the different players. So we'll jump to those first and I'll go ahead and grab one of them and bring them over next to the board. Let me see. Um, I'm just going to use Erica over here. Oh, no, nope, I didn't want to pick Erica's mini up. I just want to draw a line. Although it does and, look really nice. Yeah. Erica is one of my faves. So we're going to come on, bring her over here, uh, by the, no, don't do that. <laughs> She's going to dump all so it. I'm so good at this, let me tell you. Um, all right, we'll flip that over. Okay, so then there's also Olaf. No, that's not Olaf. That's uh, Otter. Okay, and it's a it's a eagle named Otter. I don't understand, but uh, <laughs> um, okay. So as we're <laughs> as we're looking at Erica the Huntress, a uh, couple of things about backstory. She is actually 
uh, our Jarl, Alvar's daughter, um, which is interesting. She has a little bit of a, a jaded history with her dad. Um, you'll notice that she is a Christian character, which might have something to do with why she has a little bit of a, a jaded relationship with her Norse uh, father. Um, but she's also the huntress. She is very much a, a ranged uh, combat expert. You'll see that she has her uh, her abilities up here. Her uh, uh, her shoot three ability, which means that she can shoot up to three hexes away from where she is. Um, so she definitely has that longbow uh, working pretty hard for her. She's got a bald eagle as a familiar, which might seem kind of strange, but again, all that will be fleshed out through the course of the story arc. Um, but to understand the player board here, um, we have, of course, you know, the depiction of, of the character. And then off to the top, uh, off to the right on the top of the card here, we have our skills for that specific character. And from left to right, you have the Valiance skill, which is their skill in combat, attacking. And then you have their defense skill, which is when they are the target of an attack. This is the skill we're going to look at. Agility is their ability to move on the board. And generally speaking, that's a number of movement points that you have to make during if you take a move action on your turn. So she can move three hexes on her turn uh, rather than the normal, which is about two for most of the characters. Um, there is another character, Lesseline. She also has the three movement, but I think those are the, are the highest. Um, so that's the agility. Next is survival. Uh, right now, survival is simply used to uh, denote how well you can hunt for uh, game that you find in the forest as we're moving along. Uh, so the next is perception, is how well you're perceiving the, the, your surroundings. And then uh, the last one there is your willpower or your, your connection to your deity, basically. Um, the willpower skill is used when you're making prayer tests uh, more often than not. But you do use it for other things as well. Uh, but that's usually denoted by, or uh, not really denoted by, but it's usually uh, referenced by an event card or some other element in the game that's telling you to use your willpower skill to make this test. The numbers on top of the skill uh, denote a number of dice, and more often than not, that you're going to roll when you're attempting that kind of test. For example, when you're making a Valiance test, you're usually attacking a, a one of the uh, hostels or, uh, that are on the board, and you're going to be rolling three dice in this case. Um, however, it depends with, uh, it depends on, for example, if you look at accuracy uh, for Erica here, it says when this hero performs a ranged attack or hunts, uh, you roll an additional die. So there are special abilities that will add to uh, the number of dice that you roll for these different tests. You simply have to be aware of them, that's all. Um, so with defense, uh, she's going to be rolling four dice and there aren't any things to add to it. Um, but one thing to mention here is that only the champions or the heroes rather are going to be rolling dice for them. We don't have any case where the bad guys, we have to roll dice for them. Uh, they usually just have, uh, a defense value that we need to meet or exceed when we're attacking them with our dice. Or uh, there is a strength value that we have to meet or exceed with a defense roll whenever we're being attacked by them. So the bad guys don't roll any dice, only we do. Uh, so that's um, pretty good to mention. Below the stats, you have three rows, uh, a black box with a special ability off to the side of it. This is where... Um, uh, wound tokens are going to be placed on the board. So if you look at this wound token here, if I have one wound up here with the shoot three, no problems whatsoever. I can still use my shoot three ability whenever I want to. However, if I take more wounds and I have to flip that over to its two wound side, now that ability and only that ability that has two wounds by it is negated until at some point in the future I can heal or do something to where I can put this over to at least just one wound and now it's available. So whenever you have just one wound, you can use those special abilities that are next to it. 
It's only when you have to use two wounds, you have to flip that token over to two wounds that it negates the special ability that's right next to it. So Erica here can take up to six wounds before she is knocked down. That's another thing to denote about these three boxes here. Um, each box can hold up to two wounds. And once all three boxes have two wounds in them, Erica is knocked down. She's not dead. She's just knocked down and she can be brought back at a later, you know, at a later point in the scenario if we feel like we should. Now, she can even take her entire turn and just simply stand up and heal one wound so that, for example, she has five wounds now instead of just six. That may or may not be a good idea. You might want to wait for a healer because every time one of our characters gets knocked down, you have to lose a morale. And there is a finite number of morale for each uh, scenario. And if we lose all of that morale, at least in these introductory scenarios, we will have lost the scenario and we have to start over. All right, so um, standing right back up after you get knocked down might not always be the best idea. Uh, on the left-hand side of her card, you'll see that she has another special ability. This one says, with a single arrow. It says, once during her activation, when Erica performs a ranged attack or hunt, roll one additional dice if you roll at least one Jormungandr side of the dice. That's the snake symbol. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, if you do that, she can always do this. It is not connected to how many wounds she has or anything like that. This is something that's always going no matter how many wounds she has. Okay? Nice. Um, off to the far right of her card, you'll see that she has a uh, uh, rank in Viking society. She is a five, which is about middle of the road. It goes all the way up to 13, which her her... Her dad, Alvar, has all the way down to one. And each of the characters has a, a um, specific number there. Uh, nobody has the same number. About in the middle of the card, you'll see that she is a Christian character. That's what's denoted here by the cross symbol. There are three uh, different kinds of uh, faiths within the game. There's Christian faith, Norse faith, and then there's a wild faith, which is kind of like a druidic type thing. Um, just keep that in mind. Uh, each character will also have a either a familiar card. Erica has Otter the Eagle here. Or the character will have, if they don't have a familiar, they will have a special ability card. And the special ability card will simply be something that only they are able to do. And usually they have to pay some type of resource in order to do it on their turn. It's usually a free action. But sometimes you have to pay food to do it. Sometimes you have to pay morale to do it. it. Just depends on whatever the card tells you. With Otter the Eagle here, you can take a deploy action to put your familiar onto the board. Um, so that is one of the actions that your character will do during the course of his or her turn, uh, which will put their familiar in play. Up at the top of the card, you'll see that uh, Otter takes one food in order to be deployed on the board. So, you know, Otter's got a pretty good agent. Uh, he doesn't work for free. He needs to be paid uh, in order to uh, get out there. So that's what that's what that symbol is. And then on the upper left hand, I'm sorry, upper right hand side of the card, you'll see that Otter also has a four agility, which means that he can be deployed up to four spaces away from wherever oh, wow. Erica currently is. Wow. So we're talking a huge range. Here, um, other familiars that we've played with thus far have had like two, maybe three yeah, um, right. agility. So Otter the Eagle is super, super good at this. On top of that, he has a three perception, which is also pretty high. Um, now, why would we want to use Otter? Well, whenever we take a deploy action, uh, the card tells us that Otter can search the area that we put him in for threats. And if at least one hostile is revealed and visible by Erica, she can perform a free ranged attack on That's it. That's nice. So, I like that idea. So super, super good. So yeah. it's this is really uh, Erica is probably one of the more versatile characters mm -hmm. that are in uh, the game. She's broken. got really high hit points and she's got really good abilities. So in that first scenario, we were not able to use her because. Uh, she was taking care of uh, uh, Alvar back in yeah. the book while we kind of scouted things out. 
Now, also during the hero's phase, whenever, whenever Erica performs a ranged attack against a hostile that is in Otter's area, you roll an additional die. And that's in addition to her accuracy. So if Otter is in the same hex as one of uh, the hostile that, that Erica's shooting at, she's going to be rolling five dice because she has a base of three, and she gets plus one for accuracy and then plus another for having Otter there. Wow. Okay, so it's it's a pretty cool combination uh, that Erica and Otter carry out here. Um, but uh, that's generally how you can kind of understand the, the player boards. Um, and that's only one chord. We're going to move on to the next chord. Do you guys have any questions so far? Nope. She just seems really good. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, she is. Oh, she is. She's definitely my favorite character. Um, she was one of the first when we when they started introducing me to this game as I was coming on board uh, with the company. Mm -hmm. And she was one of the first characters that I saw artwork for. And I was just like, whoa, that's cool. Yeah. And um, then I started to read some of her abilities and it was just, yeah, she's been one of my favorite characters ever yeah. since. All right, so if we look over here at the uh, scenario board, um, up at the top, we have this turn track. And the turn track um, denotes helps us keep track of what turn we're on. Um, you'll notice that there are two tokens on here, an L and an M. These are called Saga tokens. And those Saga tokens will uh, uh, basically correlate to different paragraphs within the storybook that we have to read that keeps the storyline going, that keeps the story arc moving. Um, so whenever we get to the beginning of round three, we're going to basically take a break and read paragraph 210 in the storybook. Whenever we get to round seven at the beginning, we read uh, paragraph, let's see, which one is it? 165 uh, to see what happens there. So you, you, you might be thinking, well, you, there's two of them here. Are we just unlimited number of turns we can take? However, well, we read page, paragraph 165 at the beginning of round seven with that M over there. If you look at the scenario card here, you'll see that there are three things that we need to do. We need to survive, we need to find our clan, and we need to heal Alvar. Well, surviving is is connected to how much morale we have. If we, if, as long as we have more than three morale, we're good. Whenever we get to less than three morale, we have to read paragraph 160. Whenever we get to zero morale in the camp scenario, we have to read paragraph 165, which is the same one as letter M over here. So spoilers, maybe just a little bit. This is not a good saga token that we will run into. So we want to try to accomplish everything else before we get to round seven. Uh, so we basically have six rounds. Uh, to do this because those saga tokens, that saga token will be read at the beginning of round seven, which will basically say, you suck, try again. Um, so there you go. Uh, so when you say find your clan, we're going to actually start over here um, because we did find a couple of things in the last, do you guys remember if we found two or three? I think it was just two. Yeah, I think so. We found, I think, yeah, yeah two, two yeah. sounds right to me. Yeah. Okay, that, that's where it's defaulted because we, we kind of just, um, uh, we just kind of uh, simulate uh, that you've already played the first scenario, whether you have or not. Yep. Um, so basically what we have to do is we want to try to get this brown cube as far over to the right as we possibly can. Now with the heel Alvar, there will be times, whether we're reading a paragraph or whether we've done something on the board and we flip something over and read a saga token or whatever it might be, that will tell us to move the heel out of our objective token one to the right. And of course, we want to get that as far over as possible, noting that there is another paragraph that we need to read if we get it all the way over. That's a good thing if we yeah. get it all the way over there. <laughs> all right. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about here is the resource pool that's right up here. Uh, you'll notice that we start with uh, the gold tokens are kind of our morale. We start with nine of those. We start with two food. We also start with two wood, which are the green tokens over here. We also have these plus one uh, action tokens that we can use at any point throughout the course of the game. Anybody can use it, but once we've used those plus one tokens, 
they're gone and they aren't replenished. So uh, take that into account. But if we get into a pickle, we may want to use one of those just so that we can get things done. The next thing is over here. This is the threat card. And the threat card is basically the AI of the threat tokens as they are moving around and doing things on the board. If we look at it, first of all, we see that the threat token has a three combat strength. In other words, it's going to be attacking us with a, a level three attack, which means we would have to roll our defense dice and try to get at least three or more successes to take no wounds. All right, so if, if we roll two successes on our defense roll, then we would take one wound and that's it, because you take the difference between uh, the number of successes that you roll uh, compared to how many, you know, what the level of attack it is. All right, so it does not have a defense characteristic. That is indicative that we actually can't attack it. We have to understand that the threat tokens represent sounds that we hear in the forest. We can hear footsteps. We can maybe even hear, you know, we can see the clouds of, of breath. Uh, coming out from behind uh, you know, the bushes or, or what have you. But we can't see the enemy. We can't see who it is. So we can't attack threat tokens. We have to uh, reveal them and so that they are they're shown as being the hostiles that they are, which is one of the reasons why we want to try to use our, our familiars mm -hmm. as much as possible to do that so that we can uh, be able to attack them before they have the chance to attack us. We also want to try to keep from allowing them to ambush us because those things, you know, being ambushed is not good. Um, we take a lot of wounds that way that we won't be able to use our defenses against. So we want to try to keep them from um, ambushing us as well. And going on, you'll see that they also have an agility of one, which means that the threat token will move one hex uh, toward the heroes. And in order to determine how they move, we use the prey priority order, which is the second row on the card. Um, and the prey priority, the first symbol there simply means that they'll move towards the closest hero to wherever they are. If there is a tie for the closest heroes, then that tie will be broken by the second symbol, which simply means that whoever has the most wounds, they're going to move towards that person. These little guys just want to kill stuff. They don't want to fight. They just want the easiest death possible. So they're going to go after the people that are the weakest. If there's still a tie for the weakest person, then it will go to their rank in Viking society and they'll always attack the higher ranked weakest person at that point. Below that is their keywords. They have a shoot one and then cowardness. Uh, think of cowardness as cowardice. It's a little mm -hmm. bit of a typo, but we'll, we'll have that fixed. Um, shoot one simply means that, as with Erica, she could shoot three, which means that she could shoot three hexes away from where she is. Shoot one simply means that they can shoot adjacent to wherever they are. Mm -hmm. They're throwing spears or they're shooting arrows, whatever it might be. Cowardness simply means that if they can shoot at you, they will shoot at you. They're not going to try to move into your hex and ambush you or anything like that. They're just going to continue throwing their spears or shooting their arrows at you. Over here on the side, you'll see that we have hostile cards uh, over here and here. These two different types of hostile cards are flipped over whenever we reveal that kind of token on the board. So whenever we reveal a small hostile token, we'll flip one of these cards over. Whenever we reveal a bigger hostile token, we'll flip one of these cards over. And that will give us, it will give us the AI for how they as a hostile will act. Um, that overrides what they do as a threat with this guy. All right? Okay. Um, we also have a, uh, a prayer. Uh, we also have these prayer cards. And what we'll do is we'll, we will simulate that one of these cards was prayed into existence during our, because I think one of them was, but I don't remember which one it was. And um, I think it was penance. I don't really care. Was it? Yep. I don't like penance. Perfect. So... We're just going to I mean, no, it was definitely glory to tear. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think it was, too. Um, <laughs> so we're just going to do that to simulate that a prayer card it was prayed into existence during the first scenario. These do stay around for the uh, for the uh, uh, the chapters. 
Um, I don't know exactly when. I'm pretty sure the storybook will tell you whether or not they continue to stay in existence as you go through the chapters. Um, but it, in this particular case, it definitely carries over from, from the first to the second scenario. So basically what you do with these things, if you look on Glory to Tear, at the bottom of the card, it tells you on the, on the left-hand side the number of successes that you have to meet or exceed with a willpower test in order to successfully put that card into play. On the right-hand side of the card at the bottom, it tells you what resource you can spend to purchase successes if you didn't get the number of successes that you needed to put it in. All right, so if you only roll two successes on your willpower test, you could also lose a morale to get up to three and then put the card into existence. Now with prayers, um, the top of the card denotes what kind of character can pray for this specific prayer or this specific card. It also tells you the only characters that can benefit from the effects of this prayer card. So for example, only Norse characters can, can pray to Tyr, um, and only Norse characters can benefit from the blessing that Tyr gives with this card, and which says that this hero performs a melee attack, Jormungandr, snake side of the dice, will also equal successes. All right? And that's for any Norse character in the game, um, not just the person who prayed it into existence. Okay? Um, and with that knowledge, you can kind of take a look at the, at the Christian Penance card or the Wilds Animal Senses card and uh, give you a basic idea of how to read those things. All right, um, notice that the prayer row here has two spaces per faith. And that simply denotes that only two prayer cards from any one particular faith can be in action at any given time. If you want to put a third one into play, you would have to replace one of the other two. You would not have be able to have three. Over here, there are uh, fate cards. These are basically oh. event cards that we will talk about later on. I want to go ahead and talk about the board uh, before we move on any further. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and pick our characters. Uh, well, we'll read the introduction, and then we'll pick our cards. Oh, right. Um, all right, so a couple of things on the board. Um, first of all, if we go down here to this hex, down at the bottom, you'll see that there are three symbols at the bottom of the, that hex. The first one is the agility symbol with a two next to it. What that simply means is that you have to use two movement points to enter that hex. Now, most of our characters only have two movement points, so basically it's rough terrain. That's what that denotes. The second symbol there, uh, is the perception symbol with a number two beside it. So if you are looking for something in the hex that has that symbol with a number two or a three beside it, that's how many successes you have to get with your perception test in order to successfully find whatever it is that you're looking for. Additionally, the third symbol there, it means that this hex provides cover for you. Uh, and so while you're making a defense test, if you're the the target of a ranged attack, uh, you can also count the tree face of the dice as a success nice. um, uh, in your defense roll against a ranged attack. There's also a uh, quarry token here, and that simply means that there's some woodland creatures here that we can hunt to gain more food uh, to use for our familiars or for other things that we would need to use food for during the course of the scenario. The hex where the H Saga token is, is the designated prayer area of this board. And that's denoted by the three faith symbols that are down there. A couple of things about praying. It is an action that you have to take on your turn. If you are praying in a space where another like faith character is. So for example, if, if Erica is a Christian and she's praying in this spot and there is another Christian character in there like Leseline then she will get a plus one uh, success to her prayer check. But if there's somebody who is there that is not of the same faith as the person who is praying, um, they will actually uh, negate your ability to try to pray and to try to put one of those cards into, into play. So that's something to keep in mind as well. These uh, Saga tokens are exactly the same as the ones you saw on the turn track. Whenever you move into these hexed areas, 
Uh, we will read off that paragraph in the storybook, whatever it denotes, uh, whatever it corresponds to, rather. Um, so you, you don't have to take an action to do that or anything like that. You just, uh, when you move in, you can go ahead and read that paragraph. These things over here are um, totems. And basically what that means is that this, is, uh, this denotes a spawn area where either more quarry tokens or possibly more bad guys will be showing up. And then these threat tokens uh, represent sounds in the forest, as I said earlier, that uh, we know somebody is out there, we know something is out there, and we know that uh, they're, they're not friendly towards us. And there will be other things that we start. We're all going to start in either this hex or this hex, uh, as far as our characters are concerned. And uh, without that, with, with, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and read the introduction so that we can uh, go ahead and pick our characters and get started. So here we go. Song 1, The Bloody Horn, Part 2. You take a quick look around. A deathly silence reigns. Magnificent and grotesque, the dragon's head dominates, the sad guardian of a devastated and ransacked camp where old sailcloths and piles of empty boxes lie in heaps. Did Thor unleash his storms on these hilltops? Did famine and cold force your predecessors to abandon camp? Did those gesticulating creatures with deformed arms attack them? So many questions leap into your minds while the detestable yelping of your pursuers slowly subsides in the gloomy light of this strange place. Might they not dare to come this far? Would they be frightened of the camp? Reassured, you survey the surrounding area until you find a suitable landing place that will allow your longship to moor. One of you blows a horn with all of their might, hoping that your companions will understand the message. After an unbearable wait, you finally see the silhouette of the ship approaching. Brandishing a torch, you signal your presence with the sweeping gestures that finally allow the ship, after several complex maneuvers, to avoid the reefs and dock. As you help your comrades to disembark, you're told that Alvar's condition has worsened. He swings between incoherent mumbling, screams of pain, and sudden loss of consciousness. Time is short. You must gather the most able-bodied among you to search the camp, find food, light a fire worthy of the name to ward off the biting cold that is exacerbated by the wind, tend to your wounded, and perhaps find traces of your clan. Non-playable heroes are Alvar and any playable heroes from part one. And then we also have to have eight playable heroes, but each hero starts with a wound. All right, let's get to it. All right, so um, we have Erica out here already. She is one of the one of the eight that we can take, and uh, you have free reign based basically on the rest of them as well. Oh boy. Okay. Um, so I'll let you guys choose. You, you each get two characters each, so I'll let you guys go ahead and choose that, and then I'll just uh, oh, choose no. two after you're done. Wow. You're just throwing stuff around. What did you do, Nick? <laughs> you looked like a Michelin Man Viking, so I was like, uh... Yeah. Pilar, or Frody, sorry. Frody, yeah. Frody is Frody is pretty awesome. He's actually pretty good. He, he's our blacksmith, and uh, he's he's got some pretty cool abilities. You'll need to flip him over, because um, you've got him on his story side right now. But if you look at his abilities, he's pretty good. He's got Frenzy. Um, which, if you remember from last time, um, oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that is a nice ability. Good night. Ooh, breaker, that sounds cool. Or breaker, sorry, armor breaker. That sounds cool. Yeah. Um, uh, Drang. Drang has frenzy as well. I right. Remember. Yeah. But uh, he also has support, which is a very important thing because support helps other people around him mm. re roll dice on when they're performing tests so well we used drink last time so we can't use them this time right um that is already. correct that is correct um I, i'm just gonna uh, pretend we didn't <laughs> we didn't we didn't use them last time uh you guys yeah. just you know it, it's just it's a clean slate guys it's a okay. Slate. Okay. clean slate uh -oh. so Who's just, just, thing? Well, you guys can use whatever you want Cool. It's yeah, we're we're picking two per player, right? That's correct. Yeah. So I'll take these two. 
Oh, I see. I was completely missed that part. Oh man, so many options then. Ooh, this guy needs wood too. Or no, wait, morale. That's morale. Yeah, good old Hemming. Yep. Hemming and his Hemming and his his flask of courage. <laughs> wait, who grabbed him, Corey? Me, yeah. Yeah, if you if you read his special ability card, um, he has that. He has that courage in wine. So, uh, <laughs> perfect. He gets a little scared, takes a couple tokes on his flask, and he's good to go. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use Erica for sure. Okay. So, I like, I like ranged hunter like people. Yes. They always She's good. definitely that. What else are you taking, All Corey? Right. Oh, I, I'm kind of looking for a good combo here. Whoa. Oh, wow. That's Gear off is all, all of the um, affiliations, huh? Yeah. Oh, is he the uh, innocent dude? Or that's his ability? <laughs> yeah. Really, but benefits all beliefs. So, so basically, well, you know, he cat. can't pray. Mm -hmm. He can't pray, but if he's... He can be present with any faith and provide them a plus one. Okay. And he also benefits from all of the prayer cards, not just, um, you know, yeah. he, he, he'll benefit from the Norse one. He'll also benefit from any Christian cards that are in play as well. I kind of like That's that. That's definitely the guy that I want around me when I'm praying. <laughs> <laughs> He's just an encourager. He wants to help everyone. <laughs> Oh, boy. Dear God, I, I really... Oh, Gerald, get away from me. What are you doing over here? God. <laughs> I'm trying to help, man. <laughs> um, let's see here. Yeah, he's, he's actually the... Uh, He's actually the runt of the litter, so to speak, because he looks uh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's he's basically the, the, the village idiot, so to speak. <laughs> um, but he's got some... He's got some pretty cool things up his sleeve. I feel bad for Arnolf, but hopefully, he, uh... Arnolf, Arnolf actually has a pretty cool ability. Um, if you look at it, Arnolf will be able to, whenever you send Arnolf in, um, uh, when a threat token reveals more than one hostile in the area, um, you reveal one less hostile. So if there are three hostels that are supposed to spawn there by that threat token, only two spawn. So it, it's actually a pretty cool uh, ability. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to use Arnold on like the upper level hostel guys in case you. Oh, boy. yeah, that would work. That would work. <laughs> oh, I think I got it. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Get this stuff. Whoops. That guy was cool. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Norris pretty good. Ready for Valhalla. That's a great. Right. He, yeah. He's he's our he's our blind statesman basically. Um, he's he's half blind, he's... but uh, you know, his perception is a one for crying out loud. But he's got a lot of cool things. He's got that loner ability that uh, Drang also had. Uh, but he also has this swan song ability. Uh, that he has to use a morale to do it, but it says whenever Norse suffers a wound that makes him unconscious, he can attack in melee with three additional dice before becoming unconscious. Oh, geez. Nice. So if he's alone, that means he'll roll seven dice in a in like a, a <laughs> coup de grace. You know? I like <laughs> or it. a parting shot, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he, he's pretty cool. All right, so you guys have got your, your six, so I just need to pick... A couple. Let's see. We've got. Oh. <laughs> Don't forget your damages. Wow. Yeah, everybody has to start with one wound. Right? Oh, gosh. Man, you guys have picked a strange lot. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> we have, like, no traditional Viking type. Uh... Well, I mean, there's Nor. There's Nor and Frody. They're both True. traditional. But uh, I suppose Erica yeah. is. Yeah, Erica is too. But um, 
Wow, who do I choose? Um, interesting. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. We did we did Lesseline, Bergen, Queen Petronia. Uh, no, not not Petronia, but Lesseline, Bergen, Drang, and um, oh, what's that little kid's name? York. 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 We did the the York. King. Was York was the bomb. Yeah, that's that. right. Yeah. Dude, David and Goliath much? Absolutely. He pulled through. Um, he did. Um, so we could. Yep, I'm going to do it. We're going to actually, I told you guys to pick whoever, but uh, you guys didn't pick any of the people that we chose the first time around. So I'm going to go ahead and stay with it. I'm going to pick uh, uh, Oslov. First of all, and I'll just put my guys over here. That's all right. Yeah. Oslog. And then I'll also choose Queen Petronia. No. Whole new cast. I like it. Yep. The whole elite, new cast. Now elite we're looking at eight. Fearful eight. Dreadful eight. Hateful eight. Hateful um, eight. Yeah, it's the hateful eight. That's right. But. <laughs> We aren't necessarily hateful of each other. We just uh, don't really trust each other just yet. Okay, so I've got uh, Oslog and Queen Petronia. All right, so Queen Petronia, I believe, is going to have the uh, leadership token. So those will be there. And then I also need to get uh, wounds for both of them, and I'll get them set up in just a minute. Okay, so generally speaking, just to give you a little bit of a, a kickstart, so to speak, what we have to do during this, uh, one of the things that we have to do during, during this uh, scenario is we have to get Alvar over here to the campfire. Mm -hmm. And we can only do that by utilizing this card right here, which is why we start Reveal. All right, so Alvar is in the boat, and we have to move him by basically carrying him. Now, it is possible for us to kind of piggyback him uh, where if we have somebody move from here to here, on the same round, we can have somebody that is here that hasn't moved yet move him to here right. and then so forth and so on. So you can piggyback him that way. So we should probably kind of uh, give some thought to that while we are determining who goes here and who goes here to start. Okay. <laughs> The way you move Alvar is you have to make a Valiance check, and you have to get at least two successes. So the bigger people in the group, which we are missing two of them, with Drang and uh, um, Bergen being out of the picture, because we used them in the last scenario. Mm -hmm. But there are other people that, are, that, that can, can carry him sufficiently. Um, people like Frodi, um, possibly even um, uh, Nor. Uh, he's got three. Erica has three. Um, so, you know, it, it's possible to get him there. But uh, we just need to make sure that we're there. Um, another thing that we want to make sure is uh, keep, keep in mind is that support ability on the different characters. If we can try to make sure that whenever we're doing a test that there's somebody, at least one person, uh, in that hex that has the support ability, it'll help us mitigate the dice a little bit more. Um, so, uh, just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, but we are pretty much ready to go. We just need to put our people out here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, have, I'm going to have Oslog, uh, go over here. And then I'll have Queen Petronia go over here. And um, so just keep that in mind. We want to try to spread out our, our big guys, have one go here and one go here, and you know, so to, so to speak. But you guys can go ahead and put your people where you want, where you want them to go. Okay. Or there. So my support ability says owners of other nearby active heroes can reroll once a dice during any test. What does nearby yep. mean? Does it just one away? Nearby, yes. Nearby, no. Um, nearby means people that are in your hex. Okay. Adjacent means people mm -hmm. that are one away. Okay. 
It's a there. There is a there is a uh, a limit to I believe it's I believe it's oh good night. Uh, there's a limit to I believe six in one hex. Um, could be five though. I'm 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 second guessing myself, but it, um, as long as we have just four and four, we're good. Perfect. Okay. Oops. Oh no! Oh, look I got, at I that, Hemmings. Hemming has already started hitting the juice, man. <laughs> the ball and over already. One too many glasses. Joel Hemming. <laughs> Count on him for one thing, and that's consuming the wine. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> both of my characters have support, by the way, guys. So, yeah, there you go. Perfect. So that, yeah, that's just that just helped. If we can kind of try to do that, that really helps mitigate the dice. Sometimes die rolls are die rolls, and you can't. <laughs> You can't mitigate them enough. But as long as we're trying to do that, it helps us uh, succeed a little bit better. All right, so what we need to do uh, first, let me go ahead and explain the different things that you can do on your turn, and then you'll be able to go. So um, the first thing that we do in the round is we choose who's going to be the scout. We'll get to that in a minute. Once we've done that, we will um, flip over one of these fate cards. And the fate cards, we'll just flip one of them over real quick to uh, show everybody what it looks like and then go from there. So the fate card up at the top, it gives you the name, kind of a, you know, just kind of a, and, and then some uh, text that's just kind of a mood setting, so to speak. And then in the middle part of the card, there's going to be, if there's anything, some some event cards don't have anything in this part of the, uh, of the card, but it's just like an event that we have to carry out, some type of activity. That's that that one or all of the heroes have to do, um, and then once we've done we're, we're done resolving that, we can go ahead and go into the heroes phase. Now in the heroes phase, the card tells us first of all how many actions each of the heroes will have on their turn, and then it'll also tell you uh, what resource can be spent in order to purchase more actions uh, to a maximum of one additional action on their turn. And usually that's there if we don't have two actions given by the event card. If it's just one action, then we can usually purchase a second action using whatever resources listed there. After all of the heroes have gone through all of their turns, we move on to the hostiles phase. Um, and in the hostiles phase, uh, threats will move and attack, and then hostiles will move and attack, and then uh, using the event card, more hostiles will spawn, and there's also a possibility of more quarry tokens, as you can see on this bait card, uh, spawning as well, so that we can go hunt those and possibly get more food. And then during the end phase, um, it just tells us what we have to do in the end phase. In this particular case, we simply have to lose one morale. That's just to kind of, you know, tighten the screws on us so we don't lollygag around. Um, uh, so we try to get things accomplished. Um, there is, uh, this is a little bit of an outdated thing. There is now a fifth phase that's been added to this. Um, but um, I can't uh, remember what it's called, but it generally has to do with the spawn. Um, since that didn't really feel like part of the hostiles phase, that was taken out and it's in another phase now where other things will also happen. Yeah. But that's, that has been a recent change. Um, in this one, it doesn't really matter that much. You'll still get a good feel of how the game plays. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, and then once we do whatever is done on the, um, on the end phase here, we, we simply move the round tracker one, uh, we pick a new scout, flip over a new fate card and we continue going until we've won or lost. And that's generally how the game goes. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and flip that back over, put that there, and then we will shuffle, 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 shuffle. Give it a little shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle. All right, those guys are ready to go. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Who do we think needs to go first here? Probably someone on the boat. Yeah, so they can move Alvar, yeah. right? Where did Frody go? Is Frody... Well, I was I put myself up here. I don't know if Brody's I should have been down there. there. We've All got right, Nor and see. Erica down here. Yeah, it would, those guys look strong, right? Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Let's have the blind guy carry. <laughs> um, that's a good idea. Um, 
<laughs> um, yeah, not only really carry, but carry off the boat. No, well, yeah. here's the thing. Nor, Nor's probably saying, give him here, I'll take care of him. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so I would, I would say, yeah, either Nor or Erica would be the ones to go first. Um, we might want to try to use Erica to try to start uh, zeroing in on some of the stuff that's up yep. here. She has the range to do so. Um, but yeah, definitely I'll, I'll give... Hmm. Yeah, I'll give Nor the uh, the scout ability, which means that he'll go first. And Hemming can play a nice little tune while you're to support you while you're trying to pick up. Albert, Nobody right? likes bards. Why can't you pick All him right. up, blind man? <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead. We've we've chosen a scout, so now we flip over the first fate card, and uh, we can go ahead. And, you know, one of you guys wants to uh, read that vengeful spirit. Got it, Nick. It's your birthday. All right. <laughs> there is one among you who can no longer take being insulted and pushed to the back without saying a word. He lets you know by shouting before taking the initiative. The uh -oh. active hero with the most wounds. Um, or the lower rank, in case of a tie, gains the following roll and bonus tokens. Okay. <laughs> oh. Probably going to mess up our whole plan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Good so, old Geralt. Good old Geralt. Let's see. I'm going to try to... Oh, wait. Can one of you guys... Oh, wait. Uh, whoever Geralt. is the... Uh, can you clone one of these things over here? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I can't... Um, there you go. Yeah, there you go. That's good. All right. So we're just going to flip that over, and that becomes one of the uh, plus one die tokens. Uh. And I'm pretty sure Geralt is there, and Geralt also becomes the scout. Perfect. So Geralt is going, get out of the way, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Geralt and Arnold. Good old Geralt. This is terrible. Um, well, it's, it's, yeah... Um, it's not the best, but again, Geralt has some stuff up his sleeve, so he's he'll be he'll be fine. We'll be and we'll be fine. Okay. Well, that's me. Yeah. So of course he's over there. I can send oh boy, my cat out to do some but it costs a food and we only have two food. Yeah, we, we might um, there. And there's no like threat threats for it to look at. That's what it's good at. No, well, I mean, we. Uh, what, what's uh, Arnolf's range? Only two away. Two, yep. um, so he would be able to go here and here. That's as far away. There's nothing there that he could actually yeah. search for. So that doesn't really help that much. Um, other things that he could be doing, he does have two actions. So he could conceivably, um, for his first action, he could try to heal him the one wound that's on him and then for the second action he could move out here and and possibly uh you know read the saga token or something to that effect yeah. um if he tries to heal he's in a spot right here that um has a support character in there so he would be able to reroll if he got that blank face okay so. i forgot about healing so how do i heal again i just roll one okay die, so right? healing yeah appreciate you asking uh, I didn't go over it. Um, uh, a regular person that doesn't have the healer ability will be able to roll one die, and then if they roll a success or the two success side of the dice, they will actually heal that many hit points. But if they roll the Jormungandr side of the die or the wood symbol, then nothing happens. But if they roll the blank side of the die, they'll actually cause another wound because who knew it? Rubbing dirt in the wound actually doesn't help. That's exactly what Geralt would do, let's be honest. It, it, it would. It would. <laughs> oh, it's bleeding. If I put dirt, it stops. Silly Geralt. Yeah, why not? I'll, I'll, try, to, I'll try to heal. Why not? What, what could go okay. wrong, right? All right. Yeah, well, there, there's yeah. another thing that uh, is, is possible, too. I just want to give you all the options so you can make okay. your own choice. Um, you could also move him out here for this first action because he does have a movement of two. 
And then for a second action, you could actually start the fire, um, oh, right. which is uh, may or may not be something that would be uh, talked about by this saga token. I'm sorry, that was a spoiler. <laughs> I, I kind of want to hang out where I'm at, too, because I'm a support character as well. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm even going to use both actions. Okay, well, I, I it, it's, anyway, gen right? it, it's generally a bad idea not to use all of your actions. We've only got the one action anyway, right? No, we've got two from this yeah. this, this event card. Oh, that was the other one. Okay. Yeah, right. the fake card that I, I was given for an example had only one. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to roll for uh, um, healing myself here. But my support okay. token, so I'm supporting, or you know, we have, yeah, my supporting guy helps with this, right? Yes, it does. So basically, so, okay, so for example, let's say that, um, let's see, Frody, Frody is a supporter, correct? Oh, so is, what's her name? In yeah, the, and, and so is Evil. We have all of our supporters in one area. So they don't stack unless you're rolling that many dice. So, for mm -hmm. example, with Geralt rolling here, he's only going to roll one die. He doesn't get three rerolls. He only gets one reroll. Right. But if he were rolling a test that had four dice in it, He'd be able to re-roll three of those four dice if he needed to. Okay. Okay. Because each That's person good. would give him the ability to re-roll one of his dice, okay. up to the maximum number of dice that he rolled. So he's not going to be able to re-roll this die three times, but he will be able to re-roll it once if he needs to. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to heal anymore. We're not going to heal. We're okay. going to move. We're going to move. All right. All right. Oops. Move one, two. And ding, that ding, fires ding, off ding. the Saga token. Okay. So you go ahead and, and go to paragraph I, which is 25. Apart from the imposing tower that served as your landmark in this partially collapsed longhouse, there is not much left of the camp that your predecessors set up. The overriding impression is one of ransacking and hasty desertion. There is not a single living soul left, nor a single dead body that could indicate that your clan had been held at bay by the savages you met. This last thought is almost reassuring. Perhaps your comrades have moved to a more hospitable place, and in that case, perhaps they left you a message? You search in vain through the scattered debris of the ruined building, but if you rekindle the hearth that is there, it could provide a warm makeshift shelter until further searches can be organized. Put in play a special action card number two, the bonfire. Yeah, that's right there. The bonfire okay. card is in play. And then we also uh, move the find your clan symbol or marker one space over to the right. Perfect. And I just went ahead and took, took care of that as Perfect. well. Awesome. So if you read the bonfire token, it says that uh, you can spend for, for a free action, you can spend two wood and flip this token. So if we look at the bonfire token that's over here on the board, um, it says that spend two wood, flip it. Um, and so when we flip it over, you actually see that the bonfire is now going. But during the event phase uh -huh. of the next turn, we have to flip it back over to its other side. So that's one of the things, one of the resource management things that we have to do here. We have to go find more, more wood so that we can keep the fire going. And the reason we want to keep the fire going, if you flip it back over, during the end phase, if we haven't kept the fire going, we're going to lose two morale. Oh, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's cool. And that's in addition to uh, any morale that we lose from the event card or the fake right. card. Ooh, so we, will, we really want to try to keep this lit, uh, yeah. <laughs> if at all possible. I, I mean, let's so go ahead and light it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it stays why lit not. For, the entire, for the entire turn. So we'll just go ahead and use the two wood from the resource pile over there. And uh, that's good to go. Carol started the fire. <laughs> yes, he did. And uh, we know he's not going to let the dogs out, though, because he has a cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank God. So, so that's Geralt's turn. He moved, and then he lit the fire. Um, and it was always burning since the world's been turning. So now it's going to come. Now, the way this works, it didn't really come into effect last time uh, with turn order. But what basically happens here is that Geralt had to go first. You could not have chosen. You, you couldn't have chosen to go with uh, Hemming first. You had to do 
um, Garrel first. Now it's going to come to my turn because we go in clockwise mm -hmm. order, and I can choose either the queen or Oslog to go, whichever I choose. And then once I've done that, I'm going to use one of these little uh, tokens here to denote which one of them has gone by displacing on it so that when it comes back around to my turn, gotcha. I can easily remember oh, uh, yeah, which one I have to go with. had one character last awesome. time. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So that, that's uh, another kind of further revelation there. All right, I am going to go with, um, with Oslog. Um, Oslog is pretty cool in that she has, first of all, um, a four survival. And she has two agility, but oh. she also has this Prowler ability, which means that every area on the board only costs her one. Oh, yeah, that's really nice. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Oslog and go one, two over yeah. in this direction uh, so that uh, she can head over to this uh, quarry token yeah. and maybe get some more stuff. Uh, do I have any, uh, before I do that, though, do I have any uh, support characters in that hex that I'm in? Hey. Hemming Siller. He's I'm, I'm there, yep. 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 Uh, Hemming says, yeah, he is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try to heal myself first. Oh, yeah. Um, so that uh, hopefully I can get rid of that one wound. So I'll take this one die here and highlight it, give it a good shake, and she's good. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that one token. And with that having been done, we're going to go ahead and move her one, two over in this direction. Nice. And that's the end of her turn. So now it comes to either um, Frody or Inkle. Ooh, How do we gather um, firewood? That is a good question. Um, and without spoiling anything, you can look at the board, and the yeah. board <laughs> will have little Easter eggs um, to where that will kind of help you deduce what hexes of the board may or may not have some places where you could find some wood. Okay. That looks so, like wood, right? Yeah. Hey, I mean, you, that you, you, do have, you do have yeah, some tree stumps over there on that side of the board. And there's a saga token yeah. in one of those hexes. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> That's what my plan was, so. <laughs> yeah. Or at least my hope. Leave it up to me to have the dumb questions. No, it's not a dumb question. It's a very good question. Surprisingly no, think... enough, our our one armed, our one handed berserker Drang, is an astounding lumberjack. I'm just saying, uh, it's too bad that we weren't able to bring him. Um, he he would be able to if he's alone. He would be able to roll seven dice uh, for chopping wood. Wow! Um, and every success gets you a wood. <laughs> so. Um, he's an he's an amazing lumberjack, just down from Coos Bay, Oregon. Yeah. Been chopping. <laughs> so I'm thinking of doing Ingvold because I was wondering if I should deploy her owl up to here to search that threat token, mm -hmm. and then oh, do we want to spend a food and a morale on that though? I don't know if it's worth doing. Well, the good the good thing. Uh, the good thing about uh, doing that is that uh, nearby threats and hostiles cannot move or perform ranged attacks oh, wow. just by the owl's presence. Yeah, so, so it stays that, that's there. A, that's a good idea, yeah. You could even move use her first action to move her up here um, and fire off that saga token and then use your second action to deploy the owl. Okay, well, I, like I said I was originally going to do a heal action, but since you're suggesting that action, I'm going to assume <laughs> hey, it's for a good reason. No, 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 no. I am not telling you what to do. I'm just letting you know everything that yeah, you could possibly okay, do. Possibly. Um, but, you know, healing yourself may or may not be a bad choice at this particular moment in time. Um, just because I was thinking that's because Frody's going to help her out with that, plus she's got healing, so it just seemed like a... Correct. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, um, she is a healer, so she would be able to roll an additional die. And with, uh, well, with either Petronia or uh, Frody there. Okay, there's two. Uh, she could actually re-roll both of those dice um, because she'd be able to have two re-rolls. But, yeah, time is of the essence, so it's like, do I really want to sit and heal? It is time sensitive. It is time yeah, sensitive. I mean, it, it's completely up to you, though. All right, well, you know. For the sake of 
uh, excitement. Ingvold decides that her injury is not so bad, and she's going to check out this <laughs> this tower, I guess. She, uh, she, she's she's a she's a battle hardened soothsayer. Yeah. She's she's good to go. <laughs> so uh, then that aut- automatically fires off H, right? Is that how that works? Yes, it does. One eighty six. Okay, which is one eighty. Plenty of dirt to go around for your wound there, Nick. That is right. <laughs> she asked Gerald for some extra right. healing. Wood. <laughs> okay. You're at the foot of what, from afar, you thought was Dragon. While the entire camp is in ruins, this structure still stands proudly above the debris and seems to escape the devastation. Those that came before had worked hard to erect this tower using the wood of, the, of their Dracar, proudly crowning it with the prow of their ship. The entire structure is covered with notches or poorly crafted figures carved in the wood. When you slip inside the shelter, you discover a cascade of melted candles, a jumble of bones, and bunches of dried plants piled up in what was once an iron shield. As you wonder about, as you wander about this strange, or sanctu- I guess, as you wonder about the strange sanctuary, whispers seem to enter your mind. People have prayed here, begged, and pleaded. An immense force seems to be concentrated in this place. Add prayer cards four, five, and six to your clan prayer deck. Oh, snap. Okay, so you have this guy. We don't have this one yet, do we? This guy. Yeah, we do. Have yes. It. Well, we do have it? Yep. Yes. Somebody wasn't paying attention. Yeah, that was me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh,. Move the objective marker. Find your client level one space. Okay. Maybe this one gets stuck in there. Oh, there it is. Missing one. There it yeah, is. there we go. There we go. There we go. There so go. what does it mean if it, we put it up in here then? Nope. You know, you just put it right oh. there, which basically means that now we have um, all three of these, all five of these cards that could be possibly oh, prayed into man. existence now, instead of just the other two. Ooh, but the find really... your clan one. Oh, the find your clan one—that just that just gets moved over. That's correct. Yeah. yeah but does go. the dark brown mean something? Maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Stop that. laughs> you want to go read the last chapter of the books, people, aren't you? <laughs> okay, so that was her first action, um, and then Ingvold. Uh, what a. Or what? Inga, Inga, interesting. How what willpower work? does she have? There's some really good spells that just got added there. She actually does have three will. I mean, if you're, I, I, at this point, now that she's up there, I kind of figure it would make sense to uh, do the threat. Otherwise, that threat would be... Oh, yeah. But yeah, I, because what will happen here, uh, just a little bit, just to... We, we kind of went over this last game, but just as a refresher, what will happen with this guy is that he will move one towards the closest, mm-hmm. and then he will attack. Shoot, him. yeah. So... Um, we, if we can keep him over there by sending the uh, uh, the, uh, yeah. the owl, that'd probably be a good idea. Yeah. Okay, so I'm still going to follow up with that. So I'm sending out the owl, meaning I have to use up a food and, and a morale, and a morale. But then I get to do an uh, perception third, check, perception check of three dice, and in that space, it's a it's, is it just just one then, if it's not. Yep, marked. it's a default one because there isn't anything that there there isn't a symbol there that tells you it's something different. So it's just default one. Okay, so I'm gonna take. That should be easy. All right, got this, John. Oh, I'm watching. Okay. Easy. Ooh. All right. Yep. Okay, so then we just flip that over, right? Oops. Yes. Oh, all right. Damn. So that that gives us three bad guy tokens. So let me go ahead and uh, do that. Just a second. Good search. Good search. Yeah, yeah but at least they don't move then. Okay. Yeah. That's correct. So that guy pops out. Oh, look at him. He looks not this happy. This guy pops out, and this guy pops out. So now um, we would flip over this hostile card. Oh yeah. And we get to read that paragraph as well. So somebody needs to go read paragraph, what is it, 33, I think? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I think this is all you still. You made this happen. 
<laughs> in the bushes, Ingvo, it's Ingvo, or no, it's Inga, Inga. Oh, no. yeah. uh, in the bushes, a constant rustling. So, they really are men, or at least living examples of their most grotesque idol. Just gesticulating <laughs> in a pagan dance resembling martial training, they advance, spears and lances in hand, their faces hidden by masks with terrifying expressions. Muffled cackles get louder and a malevolent, malevolent, malevolent glint pierces through the lifeless eyes of the wooden faces they wear. So, oh, yeah. I got some vermin charging at us. Yeah, those vermin, we, we recognize them from the last one. But uh, for those who have seen him for the first time, they no longer, if you look at the threat uh, card over there, they had, as a threat token, they had a three combat. Because we didn't know what they were. We didn't really yeah. kind of see. So we, we kind of overestimated them. Uh, but now that we see that they are, ah, they're just little pipsqueaks. Uh, they have two combat. And now they have one defense, which means that we can now attack them. Whereas we couldn't as a threat token. Oh, right. They're still only moving one. Uh, and they no longer have the shoot one capability, so now they're going to be not shooting at us. Oh, they're yeah. going to be moving towards us and trying to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Their their threat priority, or I'm sorry, their prey priority order stays the same. They're still going to go after the closest person. If there's a tie, the weakest person. If there's still a tie, the highest rank in Viking society. All right? Yep. But that is that, and I think that was the end of Ingvald's turn. She yep. moved and then deployed... Inga. <clears throat> and since Inga is up there, you guys have already uh, been reminded and pointed out that those three hostiles are not going to move, mm -hmm. and they aren't going to uh, uh, attack anybody this round. <clears throat> All right. So now it goes to either Nor or Erica. I think we're going to go with Nor, and we're going to try to move Mr. Alvar off the boat. Okay. Um, so he's going to roll three dice, and he needs to get support. at least two successes. All right, and we've got one support, so I'll be able to re-roll one of these. You're correct. Oh boy, what's the button to roll again? Yeah, no, uh, don't don't R. hold on to them. Just uh, oh highlight. yeah, yeah. Yeah, draw the box and highlight. There you go. There we go. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> oh my God. I, right. It's okay. I, I didn't see that. I mean, I, I had my eyes closed. I also have a support. Um, don't re-roll the... Don't re-roll back the tape, because I didn't have my eyes closed, but no. <laughs> I, I've got my support. I'm confident in this. Whoops. Oh, you're confident. Okay. I'm confident. <laughs> oh my gosh. Not confident. Confident shaken. <laughs> um, Can you repeat okay, that well, action? The... the the good thing is, is that that was your first try. Let's let's give it a second. Yeah, try. right. Somebody help! Somebody help the uh, the the sight impaired man um, have the yarl onto his back. That was a uh, Hemming's job, but apparently Come he's on. just sitting there Hemming. singing his tune. Yep. Hey, Hello, Hemming. hey, hey there, there we go. We go. <laughs> Nor right, so... shall not be impeded. Yeah, okay, so we move Nor and we move. Uh, yeah, there you go, just like that. And that, unfortunately, was both of your actions. So there you have it. Hey, we move forward. That's all that matters. Yeah, that, that is good. That and, is good. And it was the blind guy, so good for him. <laughs> <laughs> Took a little work, but he made it through. Okay. So now we come back, and Geralt is already gone because he was the first person to go. So we yep. put one of those tokens on him. Uh, matter of fact, everybody can take one of these wooden cubes and uh, put them where they're supposed oh, to yep. go if you have um, space to. And I'll do that. Okay, so now it is uh, Hemming's turn okay. uh, to do what you would like to do. Um, by the way, what does it mean granting combat? Just like giving another action or? Uh, where, where is that talk about? Uh, War song? Okay. Yeah. Um, War Song says that he grants combat to nearby active heroes. Combat is a special ability that basically just gives them plus one attack in melee. Okay. So if you look over at, um, uh, let's see, at oh, Bergen, yeah. 
Vertigan has combat, and it says when this hero attacks a melee, roll an additional die. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, definitely need to move out of here. Do I stay with the party? Probably, because I've got support. Move up. What else can I do? Okay. Been drinking a little too much wine here. <laughs> That's something Hemming would never say. <laughs> Not enough of wine. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I could use more wine, thank you very much. Okay. And now to, yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to do that either. I've only got a valiance of one, so I can't do any carrying. Well, um, remember that movement is the only thing you can only do once. Oh, that's right. And carrying counts so, movement. Yeah. Okay. Now, the, I could be wrong, but... I since you failed, uh, you didn't actually move with Nor that first time, right? Which is why I I, um, I allowed you to roll a, a second time or to try again. Um, but I that's my interpretation of it. I could be wrong. I'm just take timer. Okay. We don't want an asterisk on this game. Well, I'm not all like there was guys, with the last so. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all support. <laughs> I guess I could set myself up even further, head down the trail here. Yep. Um, yeah. And then... Good idea. The, my second action... I don't you, know what to do. Um, where were you? You were with uh, Queen Petronia? Yeah. Oh, with Erica. Oh, he, he was with Erica, and Erica is not a support character. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, you could try to heal yourself. Um. It's a one in six chance that you'll hurt yourself doing it. So there's that. Yeah, that's not it's a gamble, right. but not a very big one. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. That. gambling. Yeah. Why not? Here you go, I'll move these out. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? Yeah. That's a bad question to ask. <laughs> hey, it doesn't even matter. Hey. Got it. All right, cool. That makes feeling better. So now he can drink more wine. Yep, of course. He, he, sooner or later, he's going to put two and two together. Um, the reason I feel so bad is because I drink so much wine. Um, <laughs> um, but maybe not. Okay, so with uh, Queen Petronia here, she is going to... Um, hmm. Um, She's just going to move uh, over here. Oh, no. She's been hitting the sauce, too. <laughs> um, all right. So she's going to go ahead and move over there. She's also going to uh, take advantage of Geralt's support ability, and she's going to try to heal herself. Oh, yeah. So. Oh. And she's good. You guys are making this too easy. Well, I mean, again, there's uh, she's the queen. What do you expect? True, true. All right, so that that's was that was her two actions, and so now it's Frodi's turn. Okay, so I was expecting Frodi to. Uh... Frodi doesn't need any help. Come on. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, action to try to pick up old Alvar there. Um, need valiance. Yeah, value is difficult. I have four. Yeah. You got four dice. You need to get two successes. All right. No problem. <laughs> He's been working out all day with his big axe or hammer or whatever. Hammer. Okay. Yeah. yeah, hammer. All right. You ready, uh, John? I'll go for it. I'm looking at your model, so. But we're good. We're good. I'm watching this now. I've got you. Oh, the, yeah, look yeah, at that. See, look at Four. that. He practically threw Albert. Yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> okay, and then um, for the second action, 
Uh, he putted Alver with his hammer. That's what he did. <laughs> <laughs> no, now Alver's got two patches on his eyes. <laughs> exactly. Mm, yeah, um, pitching wedge hurt a little bit. What did uh, you I'll, guys do? <laughs> I'll go ahead and try a heal as well with uh, Hemming helping me out. Right? Yeah, yeah, you got to support there. Okay, That's a good uh, idea. Oh, ask the wino about how to tend to your wounds. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, you it's, can do it. <laughs> it's one die then, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. one die and you can reroll. Good luck. Oh, no, don't it even need the reroll. Oh, Thank you. All right. Who knew there was a combat medic school right? back home? Apparently. <laughs> All right. So that is that. Now it's Erica's turn. Oh, yeah. So she is going to move up to the compound. Because she has one, two, what? three movement. Okay. And then she's going to send out her bird, I think. Let's see. Let's make sure it's worthwhile. Oh, no, maybe not this turn. Uh, why not? Uh, oh, actually, no, you're right. It shouldn't matter. I was just thinking having a, her, the bird out when she can also shoot can be beneficial. Yeah, well, she she could do that right now. She could uh, oh, we could send, do it. It, send it over here. Yep. And um, it, it, you could actually probably get two shots over there. Um, right. Because you could, uh, with his, with his uh, three uh, perception. Right. Probably you're probably going to go ahead and be able to uh, see what's up there. Oh well, you Ooh, know there's oh, three. three. Yeah, it might be a little more difficult over there. But it's worth a shot. Could, well, here's here's the here's the thing. You could do that. That that's absolutely viable. It is a little bit of a long shot because you're looking at three successes on three dice, which is or not that bad of an idea. Right. Or you could move her here instead. Oh yeah, that's way better. And then you'll you'll get that. You can send. Um, you won't get the additional die from Otter this turn. Yeah. But then you could take a shot up here. Yep, that's way better. And knock out one of them. Wait, why would you? Where were you before? The boat. So I go one. She has three two, movement. Three. Is there a reason why she should move up way up here and not just stay back? No. Because she the, is. The only the only thing is that is that uh, whenever you have, uh, whenever you have these cover hexes. Oh right. They will block line of sight. Oh, they do so block. She, line. Oh yeah. Yes. So when she's back here. She actually doesn't have line of sight over here, right? Uh, or over here, right. center to so center. It does have to be kind of the yeah. It is center to center. That's correct. Perfect. Then I'm gonna go over there and take some shots, or a shot. Um, yeah, it'll be a shot. Give it a shot. And then it's just use the vowel. So I've got a three. I can't remember what are these guys' defense. Just one. Yep. Yep. Just one. Perfect. Now, here's the thing: you don't have the frenzy ability, so the most you'll be able to take out is one here. Right. Um, so, again, there's a possibility if you went over here, if you do reveal it, you'll get a free shot, and then you'll be able to use your second action to take another shot. Um, so there's that. There's that there. But um, shooting over here and taking one of these guys out is is also beneficial. Right. And I do get to, since I have accuracy, it looks like I get to also roll a fourth die. Yes, that's correct. Well, that should be easy to get up. Well, I shouldn't say that. That'll just be my luck. <laughs> it should be easy. All right, here we go. Ah, there we go. We got two. Here that was a him. bad roll, right. though. <laughs> that's okay. It was good enough. She's just warming up. That won't happen. Right. Yet. I'm just getting warmed up. So that is her turn. All right. I'm pretty sure Erica doesn't sound like that, but <laughs> it's close. It's ballpark. <laughs> you got a gruff voice. It's, it's cold out there. She she's got a sore throat. It's it's probably something like that. All right. So that was Erica and Hemming's already gone. So that's everybody has yep. taken an action now. So now we go to the hostiles uh, phase. So threats will move. Uh, one and attack. So this threat token over here has these two people here. And they're both equidistant to her. So we could move one this way 
or one this mm -hmm. way. Um, so we get to choose. So I'm going to choose to go here because we want to try to keep this area free because yep. it's got that Saga token in. So we'll move them here. Then they will attack. The, the threat token says that they, can, they have a shoot one. There's nobody there, so they don't attack anybody. Perfect. These guys up here would be moving one and attacking if they could, but since Inga is there, they don't move or attack, so they stay right where they are. Shots. So that's threats, move and attack, hostiles move and attack. None of that happened. Now we would spawn more hostiles uh, according to the thing that's down here. Now, do we have an A totem out there? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> There is no A totem, so that doesn't actually spawn. However, is there a C totem out there? I think mm, also no. no. So the other quarry token doesn't doesn't spawn either. So nothing spawns during the uh, hostiles phase this round. So then we go straight to the end phase, which says lose one morale. So we go down from eight to seven, and now your familiars come back to you if you deployed them. So go ahead and pull them off the board. And we move the round marker to the two. Mm -hmm. And now we need to fit, we need, we need to pick a new scout. Um, scout, scout, scout. And you know what? I think Erica is a good candidate for a scout this turn because she could pop over here and reveal this threat token yep. um, and possibly get a couple rounds off. So I'm going to choose her to be our first person. And now we just go ahead and reveal the next fate card. And we'll go from there. Oops. Let me just take that. So a, per oh, a, per a pervasive mist. Well, doesn't this suck? <laughs> no. I know what this is. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, somebody yeah. else can read it. I'll take this it's one. It's going to make me mad if I yeah. read it, so somebody else read it. <laughs> I already <laughs> can tell. A thick fog <laughs> seems to rise from the ground and envelops the surrounding area. Caution is needed when moving forward through the mist, which your eyes struggle to penetrate. Until the end of this turn, all active heroes subtract Agi minus one and shoot yep, skill range. Oh, no. And shoot oh. range is limited to one. Mm. Yep. We also yep, only get yep, one yep, action yep. and have to spur up, spend morale for one additional. Yeah, this is Ooh. this is like the you know spit in your face event card. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't really like that. <laughs> so oh, I'm anyway, a there, good spot. That. At least we got it early. Yeah, that that is true. That is true. Okay, so um, we only have one action. We can spend, I believe, what is it? Food? No, it's morale. To get an additional action if we really, really need to. Um, which, I don't know. Uh, I think we might right. want to do it for at least one person because we do need to get some more wood. Yeah, that needs to be flipped. Because um, uh, now we need to find more wood to get, to get the fire going. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the cool thing about finding wood or any resources in the game. You don't have to go get them and bring them back. You just get them, right. they go into the resource pool, and then they can be used by anybody. Okay. Hmm. All right, but uh, Erica is up, and she is basically uh, Captain Worthless right now um, because of the event card. Yeah, I'm not a big fan well, of that. Well, actually, it's, is, is it reduced to one, or is it reduced by one? So agility is reduced shoot. by one, and then... It's limited, you know, it's limited to one. The shoot's yeah, limited the shoot's limited, limited one. one, so I have to be right next to uh, one. Ugh. Yeah, not a fan of that. Well, she could... She could get over here, because it's just minus... Her agility is only minus one, so she has two agility. So she could get over there and... Then Deploy spend the morale. Yeah. I could even go to, um, like, the Saga token and then place my owl on the thread. Yeah, yeah that, that could be possible as well. I think, I think I like that. I like doing Scar. Because I still get my one, two. Yep. And then I get to read. Yep. 
three. What is J? Paragraph J. J. One fourteen. Take a look in a book and read it. Read it. <laughs> All right, Lamar Burton. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. You don't have to take my word for it. <laughs> All right. A few dozen trees have been felled at the edge of the forest. There is no doubt that this is the work of your clan. A rusty saw partially embedded in a trunk is further evidence of the hasty abandonment of the site. With a little determination, you can tackle these mighty fir trees that promise to burn rapidly and fiercely to keep you warm. Stepping back to assess the magnitude of the task ahead of you, you notice that you're walking on a bed of still fresh wood shavings. Someone has worked here recently. As you look for other clues, an intermittent whistling sound attracts your attention. A bottle attached to a branch sways gently in the wind. When you take it down, you notice a small scroll rolled up inside, requiring you to break the bottle to examine it. On it, a few lines in Latin traced in charcoal play special action card with wood cutting. Well, there we go. All right, what do we got there? Train the card item trophy two. Yeah. Oh. All right, so the item trophy two. Ooh, okay. Uh, is this right here? And this is actually pretty cool because if you oh. look at this card, first of all, um, at the top right hand side of the card, it says that it's one out of a set of three. So there's two other of these cards that we that we are looking for. The um, upper right-hand corner says that only a Christian character can actually read this parchment, which Erica is a oh, Christian yeah. character. So she can automatically go ahead and go to paragraph 138 and read that. Oh, heck yeah. All right. 138. All right. The only Christian to accompany the first expedition was Father Birdo. Captured at a very young age on the western coast, he had become the old scholar whom everyone consulted for his knowledge of legends and distant worlds. King Hakan could no longer do without him, much to the displeasure of the elders of the clan. It was he who had written these few lines on what looks like a page torn out of a manuscript. The Lord seems to have turned his eyes away from this world. Here reigns the beast. He contemplates us before feeding on our souls. The eyes of his lackeys watch us from the sky. They harass us relentlessly so that we abandon all hope. The Nort Manny have plunged into the Valley of Shadows. I fled to find and bring the light and draw the attention of the Almighty. Perhaps you can glean more pages that will shed light on what may have traumatized the old man. Oh, dang. That's pretty dark. I like it. Yeah, find your clan forward, though. Yeah, move the finder clan and then archive this trophy on your clan dashboard. Okay, so I've gone ahead and do, done oh, that. Okay, um, that's right over here. So we we've got that, and we are maxed out on finding our clan. So we got all the clues that we need to. Uh, so uh, that will that will flesh out a little bit more at the end of the scenario. All right. Additionally, what that did was that first saga token, the J saga token, is that put that wood cutting thing out here. So basically, what it, this allows us to do is you can come over here and you use your valiance to gain wood and flip. So one person per turn can come over here and flip this over. And then oh, yeah. it says that you, you can only do it once per round, basically. Okay. So uh, one person can come over here and do that, though. But um, with that in mind, it might be worth, worth us using a morale to let uh, Erica send um, Otter on over here to maybe get some uh extra shots going on so my question is is there anyone else that could even get to the wood cutting thing this turn because everyone's agility is down five valiance is terrible yeah everybody's down to one so would it be um, worth it for <laughs> yeah you you might the only thing is is that you will you will get attacked by this guy this turn and Otter would pin him down, right? No. 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 Uh, Inga would. Inga would. So um, that might be something we have Inga will do this turn. Right. Is uh, send Inga out here. Does she have a, a thing of three? Inga? Yeah, three. She has... She has uh, agility? Two. Agility of four. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So Inga could get over there easy. 
Okay. I think Eric, so Erica's more concerned about her father, so she's going to chop down some wood to keep everyone warm. Uh, Look at you playing thematically. Right? That's awesome. Uh, so we're going to... We're going to do that, so I get three dice. Okay. And I'm just looking for whatever number of successes I get. It looks like that's how many wood I'm going to get. That is correct. But you want to try to get at least two because that's how much wood we need to. Yeah. Oh, no, no don't, don't, don't say that. You have to flip it. You can't only do it once. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Let's try to get Here more. Here we go. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. What is that, four? Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll say it's four. Yeah. We'll say it's four. Not bad. Not bad. It's four? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm pretty sure if the physics allow it. There we go. Yeah. In the mouth. <laughs> awesome. So we get four wood. That is great. Yeah, that's that's right over here. And then we'll um, flip that over. One, two, two, three, four. and four. Ooh, that was a lot of work. All right. So that'll flip over, and then so now. Somebody else on their turn can simply take their turn to light the fire. Oh, yeah, and that did cost us uh, morale. Um, or, okay. Yeah, because that was my second action, so I'll remove that. Mm -hmm. There you go. Cool. Well, that's my guy. Okay, so go ahead and put your... Uh, yeah, that was that. Yep. So now it's either Geralt or uh, Hemming. Well... I could be the guy to light the fire. I mean, I'm just kind of standing there, so. But, oh, oh, no. Oh, oh. I put him in my hand. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Here. Oh, I got you. All right, you can put him back. I got your token. What is going on over here? Don't God. worry about it. It's nothing to see here. Move along. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like there's a lot to see over there. I don't know. <laughs> I'll light the fire. This guy's kind of worthless right now. <laughs> wow. Man, that's talking, hurtful. Talking smack about Geralt. <laughs> All right. So two wood. Yep. Flip the fire. Just flip it. Flip it. There we go. And we're good. All right. That was Geralt. So now it's either uh, Queen Petronia or Oslog. Oslog. Wait, what was really... it? Oh, we only have one. Action. Oh, yeah. That really messed yep. up what she was trying to do, too. Yep, it does. So she'll simply... Hmm. Yeah, this is one of those cases where she doesn't have really any. Oh, wait, you know what? She may not even be able to move that far. Because our agility is minus one. And she only has a one agility. Oh, but all, all of the things only count as one. So, oh, yeah, right, for a special still, ability. She can still move that build. She can still move there, but um, that's all I can do. So Man, that's Nick. it for her. Comes back to Frody and Ingvold. So my plan is to... Frody's going to take Alvar into the end zone. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. So I get to roll... Four dice, I think. Yeah, four dice, and I need two successes. All right. And do I get any support you, here? You get one support. Hemming is playing his fiddle for uh, his... I broke loop. a string, but I'm still going through. Broke a string. <laughs> All right, here we go. Come on, Frody. Frody. Is that a Rudy? No, I can't remember. And I get a reroll, so. You're going to need it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's that. Oh, so he spikes Alvar into the fire. Yeah. All right. So when that happens, uh, we can move the heal uh, Alvar objective one space to the right, and then we also gain two morale. Ooh, nice. There we go, that's really helpful. Yep. Yeah. So what was that for us right. to eat? Oh. All right, so then Brody finished his job for the day. Yep. Thanks, Brody. All right, so now we come back to Hemming. Er, uh... No, not me, right? Nor, nor. Where am I, guy? Oh, yep. oh I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's yeah, too bad we can't right, do very much. Um, I guess I will, I'll move them up. Yep, that's it. That's and, all you can uh, do. call it good. Yep. Now we're back to Hemming. Mm. 
Now, Hemming has the opportunity, if he wants to, he could try to heal Nor. You don't have to just heal yourself. You can try to heal other people. Oh, even if I'm not a healer, huh? Yes. Hmm. Would you like some of my wine? I can't see anyway, so yes. Yeah, yes. Just, yeah. You can just, you know, speak in a high voice and... <laughs> He'll, he'll think you're Erica or Ingold yeah. or somebody else. <laughs> All right, I'll roll the one die here. Better be a hit. If you hurt me, Hemming, we're going to have problems. All right. Gotcha. Look at that. There we go. Hemming just found out that wine also has medicinal <laughs> properties. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> here, take a swig of this. That'll make you feel better. Nor can you see All again. Right. <laughs> I can see yeah, clearly can. now. Alright, Queen Petronia is going to... Uh, has Ingold gone yet? Ingold hasn't gone yet, has she? No. Nope. No. Where is she at? She's over there? Yes, yeah, um, so I'm maybe going to pray. Actually, that should be my action. Um, well, actually, I'm going to move Petronia over there so that you actually can't pray. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, but I'm going to end my action there, my, my turn, and uh, use my authority and actually give you an, another action. So you actually get two actions on your turn. Okay, that's a good trade-off, I guess. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so, and then, wait, was that the end of your, yeah. So, then I'm going to deploy uh, Inga. Yeah, do we uh -huh. have... We have a meat, and yes. uh, and we, we got more morale now. Okay, so I'm gonna deploy Inga on one, two, and I have four agility, so it's three, but that's still enough. Mm -hmm. Over by those uh, addies. Yeah. All right, let's. Here we go. And then my perception check of three, and do I get a bonus from? Yeah, I get a bonus from. Your uh, petro petronilla, right? Um, or support? No. Does, does oh support yeah, Inga's in. Inga's in. Yeah, so Inga, Inga yeah. isn't nearby petronilla. Technically, it's not. Yeah. For, that makes furthermore, sense. familiars don't benefit from the support. It's just the heroes. Okay, good. Well, actually, it doesn't have any uh, cover over there. So hopefully, this is. So yeah, three dice with uh, getting one success is uh, almost a uh, uh, money in the bank. All right, so come on, Inga. Oh, all right, that was close. There you, well, that was pretty close. <laughs> all right, and so two bad guys. Yeah, two bad guys show up. So one and two. But they're stuck there. That's good. Ooh, and they can't shoot. Place. So that's good yeah. Too. Erica's right there. Okay, um, and then for uh, my second action, I guess I'll go ahead and you don't try the second shoot. action. No, I got a second one. For, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Petronia, right? yeah. With Inga, I can do a heal, and I get a support from Petro Petronilla, right? Pet Petronilla, yes. Petronilla, yeah. Okay, so then I roll just one die, right? Nope. Or, or no, no, I roll nope. two die because I'm a healer, yeah. Yes. I roll two die. I get to ignore bad or blanks. Yes. Okay, wow. And Jeez. Here we roll. Yeah. Easy. Don't even need easy, it. Easy peasy. So healed. Ingle In In just got a couple of years back on her life after yeah, that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she just got the fountain of the fountain of youth. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh my turn. That's everyone okay. then. And that's everyone, yeah. So uh we'll go ahead and okay, so first things first. Um uh threats will move and shoot. There are no threat tokens on the board, so that doesn't happen. Second um, hostiles will move and attack. So uh, these guys will go here. Oh, but they're not going to be able to attack because they don't have to shoot. And here, that's correct. They're not going to be able to attack this turn. Yeah. These guys would be moving into Erica's hex, but because Otter's there, that doesn't happen. I'm not Otter, but Inga. Um, they will not move or attack. So that's it for that. And so now we spawn. And so we look for a totem B. There's no totem B on the board yet, so that doesn't happen either. We go to the end phase. 
lose one morale. And we have the fire lit, so we only have to lose the one. All right. And, and that's that. So now we move and we, need, we, we move the turn tracker uh, up to three, and that fires off Saga L. Oh. 210. So we just need to read paragraph 210. But we flip the fire in. We do that. We we do that at the um, at the event phase. We flip it back. Oh, over right when we flip. Yeah, yeah. All right, Nick. This one's on. Right you. now, it's still going. The pests that were amassing at the edge of the floor suddenly cease their maneuvers. One of them barks, brandishing his fists in the direction of the camp, which causes the disorderly disorderly flight of his fellow creatures, who disappear in the woods from whence they came. Astounded, he realizes that is that is fear that is causing them to run away. But a shiver runs down your spine when you realize that you are not the reason for their fear. <laughs> An agonizing death rattle rises in the air. Alvar, on the point of death, is convulsed with violent spasms and begins to scream, They are here! The spirits that haunt me, they are coming to take me away! His staring eyes roll back and then dis disappear beneath his lids. <laughs> you stand alert, scanning the midst that appears on the edge of the camp as a flock of crows settles on the idols that Top the wooden tower. They are now watching the camp, clapping, clacking their beaks in unison like a morbid serenade. Wow, this got Ooh. deep. Okay. Um. Oh, yeah. Remove all the threats and vermin hostiles. Okay. <laughs> they Aww. definitely were scared. Wow. Oh, great. Wow. And remove threat card two. Reveal threat card three. All right. So, uh, threat card two is this guy right here. So he goes away. Oh, five little vermins. Place totem and... A and B in the location shown on the map. I can't tell that which goes is away. Which. Oh, that's B up in the oh, upper right. Oh, yeah. I see. So now we have... And then place a threat in totem B's area. I don't feel like this is going to be a good thing. No. no. Oh, Ooh. it's... It's going to be fine. Look at that. I already oh, like this. This is fine. interesting. Don't worry. Everything's fine. Be Just happy. fine. Um, All right. So now these threat tokens are moving toward Alvar oh, no. at a rate of two hexes per round. Um, uh, da, 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 da. If This doesn't make sense to me, but uh, they're, they're moving towards Alvar. If Alvar isn't on the board, basically, then then they're going to go towards the person who has the lowest willpower. Mm -hmm. If there's a tie, they go to the person that's highest rank in order. Interesting. Uh, highest ranking rank. Mm -hmm. Okay. They don't like um, Alvar. I, I believe that, uh, yeah, you got one of those tokens out there. All right. So there you have it. Um, again, we don't have... We don't have anything else that needs to be put on the board, so we're good to go. Um, so now that's the uh, now we go into the event phase, which is where we flip the uh, fireplace over, as well as the wood okay. wood cutting token as well. And now we need to determine who's going to be the scout. Oh dear. Um. I. I think I'm good with Erica staying as the scout. Works for me. That makes sense. Maybe I can use um, my owl or my uh, eagle this turn. Yeah. Or wait. Be. No, well, we're out of food. food. We yeah, we need to hunt. Know. Oh, I know. that's true. We need food. You can blame Otter. Um, Where's Oslog? You know what I do? You know what I'll do? I'll have Oslog go first. There we yeah. go. Yeah, there we go. Now, with the scout, the, the queen can't choose herself. Right. But she can choose any other character, so I'll I'll have Oslo go first. Perfect. Um, that way we'll try to get we'll try to get some food um, before Erica's turn. Yes. Uh, oh, we need to flip this back over. Let's not forget that we have these plus one actions that are over here as well. Oh right. All right. So here's the next event card. Bled dry. That sounds great. You're sick and wounded can take no more. Continuing to advance seems to be beyond their strength. Some are ready to give up, 
and let themselves fall into unconsciousness. She put an end to this nightmare. Mm. Every active hero who has at least one wound must perform a test where X equals the number of wounds they have currently suffered. Why do we so do a willpower well. check? They need to do a willpower check um, with X being the number of wounds oh, that you currently easy, have. Easy. Okay. All right. So oh, um, if you don't have Geralt. wounds, you're good to go. Geralt is willful. That's good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We can do yeah. So Geralt, Geralt will roll uh, four dice, and as long as he gets one success, he's good to go. Um, Erica will roll two dice, and as long as she gets one success, she's good to go. Okay. Uh, but those are the only two that have to roll because Perfect. everybody else doesn't have any wounds. Here goes my four. And he's it. good. So no additional wound there. And then Erica needs to roll. All right, I'm going for it. Oh, yeah, there we and go. Oh, she's yeah. good to go as well. All right, so no additional wounds there either. So nothing happened. We have one. Uh, each, each of the heroes have one action. And then we can spend food to get an additional action, um, which really. Well, we have sucks. we have the tokens for an extra action at least. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use one. Yep. Of those. Gonna have to use one. All right. So uh, with Oslaw going first, we're gonna move into this hex, and then we're gonna use one of these to go ahead and hunt that quarry token. Now the uh, quarry token, her her survival skill is what you use for hunting, which is four. Um, she also has accuracy, which gives her an additional die there. Um, so she's gonna get five dice altogether. Nice. And um, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, get a good number of food going here. Oh yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so six food. I just brought down a buck. You're welcome. <laughs> a few bucks. A six point buck. And okay, whenever you hunt a quarry token, whether it's successful or not, it always goes away. Uh, because if you if, if it's not successful, you scared it away by taking your shot. Um, if it is successful, you killed whatever you were hunting. So okay. that's that for quarry tokens. Boom, six, All right, so that food is ready to go for whomever wants to oh, use it yeah. on their turn. So that is uh, Oslog's turn. She's good to go. Back to either Frody or Ingle. So should I deploy my owl? Against this threat, that's probably a good idea. Or Inga, I mean, um, now, that, now that we have food again, I mean, I for sure am going to. So maybe that's not as critical. You, you could. You well, here's the thing: if we do Inga, we have to use a morale to do it. Oh, right. If we use Otter, it's only a food. Yeah, we're only um, at six morale right now. Right. So with plus with Otter, you'll if you reveal it, which you probably will. It, you get a free shot, um, oh, and yeah. then you could use one of those. If you miss the first time, you could use one of those plus one actions to take a second shot. So okay, um, so I think we should use Inga. Yeah, I, I don't think we should use Inga for to reveal that threat. I think we should wait for. Um, um, well, then I feel like I should just stick. I should feel like I should use Frody because then, if you plan to move out. Petronia, then I can pray in the future with Ing Ingvold. I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, that, yeah, that, I, I, it could definitely work. Because I only have, I mean, it's one action, and I don't, yeah. Okay, well then, we have wood, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I will spend two, or so I'll, yeah, I'll activate um, Brody. He's making a fire for us, um, for poor Alvar. And that's his turn. Okay. All right, here we go. We're taking Erica and throwing out Otter. Boom. Nailed it. So it's going to cost me one food. <laughs> yep, one food. And uh, so uh, Otter has, what, a four? No, three perception. Yep. So go ahead and roll three dice and you need to get at least one success oh boy 
Do not fail me, Otter. We need you now. Oof. Nice. Good to go. Oh, All right, that was close, but it worked out. All right, so that flips that over. Oh, what the heck? Ambush. Ambush. One, one hostile. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Not oh, so that would have been really bad if it moved into our space. Oh, hello. Big, crazy uh -oh. thing. I don't like and that. that it's will... Slender Man. That will allow us to flip this card over. Oh, yeah. Here we go. And re go ahead and read the paragraph that's there. Oh, wow. Okay, so 191. Yep, read 191. All right. Oh, boy. i got to get this centered. 191. All right. A ghostly apparition stands before you. Its gigantic, misty form can only be a divine manifestation or an evil one. Noiselessly, it begins to lumber forward before uttering these simple words, which seem to sound only in the deepest depths of your skulls. Move aside. The one you have poisoned is due to us. His journey will continue at our side. Nothing seems to stop this aberration from another world. You all tremble and prepare for the worst. I'm not prepared. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if you look at... Oh, yeah. If you look at the card, they have a two combat strength. So if they attack, they're going to be level two attack. They have three defense, which means that when we attack them, we have to score at least three hits in order to knock them out. Uh, they have a one agility instead of a two from the threat card, which means they're moving a little bit slower. Uh, their prey priority is still the same. And then they also have the keyword predator. What that means is that our familiars are frightened of these things and they will not attack this thing so we the heroes have to attack it our familiars will not okay. mm. all right if we knock out this shadow then we would read paragraph 202 but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it all right now i get to do my free attack on this yep. thing and it looks like with otter there i get an additional dice so that gets me to four and i have accuracy which will get me to five. And then I just have to remember that if I roll at least one Yormunger, I get to roll another yep. dice into my pool. Oh, fuck it. That's correct. All right. That's correct. And you need to get at least three hits in one attack. Oh, man. We'll see what we got here. All right. Okay, so I didn't. I get one more dice. Yep. Because I got the Yormunger. Whoops. Yep. Oh, I just want to roll the one. There we go. Oh, no. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So that is your free action. Yep. So now what you can do is you can use a plus one action die. Uh, I'm sorry, the plus one action token from our resource pool and try again if you want. I think that's a beneficial. Yeah, I think I'm fine with that. What does the team think? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Good? Good. Yeah. Yes, I have some. <laughs> we got to protect Alvar. Yeah. I mean, he is my dad. What are we here for if we don't protect <laughs> Alvar? Oh, no! Go. <laughs> All right, so, I do. That's the, the exact same role you did the first time. Um, so, if anything, you're consistent. All uh, right. <laughs> But you get to add another die in there. Because you did you did roll a Yomring Gunther. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you rolled it you rolled again. You rolled another Yormung Gunther, so add another. Oh my gosh. Alright. Here it is. Whoops. Highlight it better. <laughs> Highlight it better. Oh there we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is right. horrible rolling. Pulling out the stops. Alright. So that does remove him from the board. Ooh, and something happens. So now we happens. have to read paragraph 202, I think it was. Well, uh, not the, the uh, okay, so according to her uh -oh. card, it says, roll. Shh. <laughs> oh, I misread. Never mind. Ignore. I hear the wind. <laughs> I hear the wind. <laughs> Sorry. Just, I thought... just, picture me, oh. just picture me putting my index finger up here. 
<laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can't hear you. It definitely worked out exactly as intended. <laughs> as the shadow vanishes, you struggle to understand how your blades could have had any effect on such an entity. Then, with a flash Especially of understanding, very well. yeah, right. I mean, barely grazed this thing. <laughs> <laughs> then, with a flash of understanding, you realize that you have displayed courage enough to dispel this creature who was supposed to inspire great fear. I'm three hexes away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the loud clacking of crow's beaks can be heard, while a voice made of tangles of screams and groans grows louder. A hundred intonations are united in a single voice. I strike like lightning. Your muscles stiffen and your throat tightens as my embrace closes around you. There's no more beautiful release than a sudden death when you wear my mask. A bloated face twisted into a scream that echoes and lasts forever. You feel the fatigue of the previous fight weighing down on you. Your legs are numb, your fingers tense and painful. Blood from your lungs, battered by effort, rises in your throat. Despite the pain, you are still ready to fight. Oops. Uh, discard this hostile card and reveal the next hostile card. Move heal Alvar objective one forward and green one morale. Oh man, I just made something more scary. Okay, what what was the end there? Is it uh, uh yeah, game one? Yeah, okay, good. So we move the heal Alvar objective marker one uh, further. Yep. Boom. And then we also gain one morale. Did anybody do that? Uh, no, I did not. I got it. I got it. So All right. So now we're back up to seven. And now, uh, if you look at the threat markers here, a couple of things have changed. Mm -hmm. um, they are now combat strength three, and they're still defense three, and they're still moving one. However, if you look down at the oh. bottom right-hand side of the card, they have two hit points now. Oh, interesting. So that means you have to hit them twice with a level three attack. Uh, I'm sorry, a level, yeah, a level three attack. In other words, three or more successes twice in order to knock them out, not just once. Ooh. Now, if you roll with one attack six or more successes, that will knock them out. Oh, okay. So there is that. But you have to roll six successes in one go to knock them out completely. If you don't, you'll only give them one wound, and then you'll have to attack them again to score a second, hopefully. And if history is any indicator, I will not be able to do that. <laughs> All right. Now, they do have... Um, uh, everybody close their eyes real quick. Let me just check. Boom, boom. Okay. I'm pretty sure that... Uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm going to double check something real quick. Assault, um, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, means that they are they are making a beeline for Alvar, and they will ignore everybody else. The oh. only way they'll attack somebody is if Alvar isn't there. And if Alvar isn't there, then they're going to attack the person that has the least amount of willpower. Gotcha. Okay, so they're, they'll, they're going to ignore people unless um, they've already done their movement and they're just supposed to attack. At that point, if they attack, they're going to be doing um, whoever has the lowest willpower. And if there's a tie, then uh, it's the person that has the highest rank in Viking society. Okay. But Predator is still there, which means that our familiars still can't attack them. Oh, no. Okay. So that was um, the end of Erica's turn. Yep. And now it is either Hemming or Geralt. Okay. And that guy hasn't, or um, he hasn't spawned yet, right? No, no new ones. No. No, we will have another guy coming on over here in B, but that won't be until the hostile stays. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and work toward getting toward K over here. Okay. Um, that's it for me. 
All right. Uh, that was Hemming. And so now it comes back to Petronia. Um, yeah. Eagle hasn't gone, nor hasn't gone. Where's Nora? At? Nora's right there. All right, we're going to have Petronia come down here. And she's going to end her turn there and give Nor a. S oh, he can't get over there. He's too I was going to try to be. I was going to try to be a little cheeky and send the blind guy to go chop wood, but <laughs> that might not be. Can't he? He doesn't have the the agility to get there. Oh yeah, he's too um, slow. Brody has Geralt gone? No, he has not. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to have Geralt do it. Oh so yeah. So I'll give Geralt. And uh, I'll give Geralt an, an additional action. Um, so he'll be able to move over there and then chop wood. Which, but I mean, uh, no, wait. Yeah, nobody's on that this turn, right? Nope. Nope. Okay. Yeah. So this, this if, if he chops wood well enough, this will be the last time I think we should um, really need to do that. Where's all the wood at? We keep lighting. We lit the fire already. Oh, you already lit the fire? Yeah. So, so we're out already? Yep. Oh, that was the food. Never mind. Yep. I'm getting mixed up. My bad, my bad. So yeah, we do need to send Geralt over there to get some, some food. I mean, some wood. Okay. So that's it for Petronia. Um, so now it's uh, Eagle's turn. Um, when it says... I just realized my ability says I grant my religion belief to nearby active heroes. Is that just during your turn? Then, if like when Petronilla was in Petronia was in my space, were you then right. my? Uh, correct. Yes. So I'm, I guess I'm not, I'm not in your space anymore. But but um, correct. Yes. What you're what you're thinking is correct. Yes. All right. So I would have been able to pray after all. Is what I'm wondering. No. Nope. Yes. Well. I well. Um, it's if they're active, so they would have been able to. As a, I would. Yeah, I think that's right. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't. I know it doesn't matter now, but yeah. I just want. I just. I just noticed that. Okay. Anyway, I. Yeah, active here. Well, active only. Uh, active simply only means that you haven't taken your actions yet. Oh. Okay. So y yes, she could have prayed there and uh, even gotten the plus one. Petronia. Um, okay. But, but that's... Uh, now you can pray by yourself. Now I'm praying yes. by myself. Um, yeah, I'm trying to... I mean, I'm looking at the two different options here. I guess they're both the same difficulty. When this hero searches an area, which I just don't think that would be that common. And then if this hero is in a totem area, spend one... Ooh, yeah, that sounds good. So if we need in. more... Or am I in a to totem? No. Is that what this... Oh, that's what this or this is. Yeah. Yeah. That could come in handy. Yeah, if we need more food or anything. I mean, yeah, we have so much now because we already got a bunch. Yeah. But then, it, then it's like, what would I next do? It, would I just move on into the big camp place? Or get I ready don't know. to fight? What would you guys? Do you guys have any suggestions? Sorry. I don't know. I like having For abilities. Evil? Yeah, using my using my owl right now, I can't. There's nothing. There's no threats. So that's right. Not even an option. Animal senses, call of the wild. Um, this is only going to help um, wild characters, which is another reason why she has that special ability because mm -hmm. she can play these things into existence. And active heroes in her spot would be able to benefit from them. Um, so uh, it, it's it's really up to you. Either one of them would be useful, um, but uh, it's probably uh, more useful for that one for the call of the wild over there. Yeah, because yeah. Ozma um, could eventually use that potentially. Okay. Oh yeah, she's gonna do some praying and try for that. So I will then roll three die, and I need two successes, right? Yep. OK. So here we go. And Oof. that was 
Ouch. But, yeah. and yeah. if I spend yeah. one food, that only gets me. Can I spend two food for two successes to get in? You you can. Is it worth it? Um, uh, <laughs> seeing as how we're probably not going to be using our familiars that much anymore because, well, I don't know. We could. I don't, um, no, it's it's fine. I don't think. I'm fine just. Um, yeah, the, the <laughs> thing is, I don't know that I don't th I don't know that it's uh, worth it because um, we we you, already you have a good amount of food. You convinced me the answer is no to that question. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that okay. so we can move on to Nor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Nor is going to move two spaces. And he is going to go. Are there ever traitors in this game? Ooh. Oh, like hey, no uh, spoilers. Yeah, no yeah. spoilers. Come on, Tori. That's, a very, kind of acting a, little that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> currently, the answer is no. But with branching um, story arcs, uh, with each of the players kind of taking on their own uh, kind of taking their destiny into their own hands and stuff like that. There could be later on, uh, not really necessarily a traitor, so to speak, but everybody will be kind of acting in their own best interests. Yeah. Um, and there okay. is the element of distrust that enters in at some point as well. I so, like okay. um, yeah, just to, just to kind of leave it as open ended as I possibly can and answer your question. There you have it. All right. Fits both Viking culture a little bit. Gotta have a little distrust. Yes, it does. I like it. All right, yeah. I just moved Noor up a little bit. Now he's kind of in the middle of the action. Okay. We'll see what happens. Sounds good. Sounds good. So then we got Gerolf. Right. Yep. Gerolf. All right, so Gerolf has that extra action from Petronia Authority. So he can uh, try his hand yeah. at chopping, chopping wood. wood. Yes. Go up there, do some wood cutting. It's your uh, okay. balance. So the one thing, well, let me just double check this here. Oh, never mind. Uh, I was thinking of Hemming. Um, oh, the combat. Hemming's got the uh, courage and wine. Yeah, I was, yeah, 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 I was wondering about that too. Yeah, never mind. Which is okay. also kind of strange. Oh yeah, that's why would you why would you encourage somebody to go drink wine and then <laughs> chop wood? Yeah, right. <laughs> recipe right. for disaster. Hey, to, what, to each their own, right? Right. All right, two dice to chop some wood. All right, those yeah. better be all Hopefully successes. You get at least two. Oh yep. my that's, gosh! Okay, that's good enough. That's good enough. We get two for next round, and then somebody else can go try to chop wood. Boom! Got them. Good enough. I like it. So that's everyone. Yeah. I think. Is that everyone? Yep, I think so. All right, so we have some. We have a new threat popping up on B. Perfect. Go ahead and move that over there for Link. And then we have to lose one morale. I got that. And we move the marker to four. And we need to pick a new uh, scout. I think I'm just going to leave it. Um, we have the food now, so I'm going to put uh, Erica going first. Oh, yeah. So that, um, oh, um, all of the. Oh, yeah. Come, by the way. Can't forget those. And the Potter. Let's see here. Um, I think that's it. Need a new face card. So now we just move another face card. And go ahead and read The Fighting Cold. All right. Cold. The chill breeze has given way to an icy wind blowing violently across the moor. So violently that you can almost feel your blood freezing and your muscles stiffening. So nothing happens, but heroes only get one action and can spend food for an additional one. But look at the end phase. Oh well. boy. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, I put it into oh, my hand. Oh, oh, oh. That's my bad. Way to do it. Yeah. I was looking at it. That's all. 
It doesn't make sense. <laughs> All right. Each hero who is not in a forest or a cover zone suffers a damage. Yep. Well, that's no good. That's... Well, it's snow good, that's for sure. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh-huh, but <laughs> All right. Well, I hear all my folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, so we're going to have to lose one morale, but in addition to that, every hero that's not in a covered area will have to also lose um, uh, hit points. So um, for that, we'll have to weigh into stuff later on. But no. uh, just looking ahead, we might want to move Hemming up here uh, so that he can drink some wine and, and you know, handle an axe. <laughs> um, uh, then I'll, I'll see about moving Oslog up here. Uh, oh, right. To, okay. to, to try to get her um, to look at that. It's, it's going to, she's going to take a wound because of it, but... She'll take one for the team. It's all good. Yeah, she's that's... a tough, she's a tough young lady. I don't think Erica's so, uh, worried about the weather. She's just worried about fighting off these shadows or threats. I I would agree with that. So uh, she's gonna I spend she's gonna spend a food and do similar to what she did last turn and send Otter on a little expedition yeah. up to there. I get three perception. So let's do it up. Whoops, no, don't move the Roebuck. Holy buckets. Just, yeah, just, just put that wherever you want. It's fine. No, no, no. Oh. Uh, my. You're so terrible. How am I the worst roller in the world? You just, just needed one success. success. Come on. Oh, Come on, man. Just oh, oh, one man. success. Literally. Um, do we have one action? Yeah, well, we do. Yeah. <laughs> um, we only have one action, so. Well, we uh, also have the spend thing, right? Yeah, but yeah, I'm going for Erica. Here's the thing: you, you, are, you already deployed otters. You can't redeploy yeah. them on the same action, on the same turn. So. Oh um, crap! Oh. Yeah, that's it, all right. Erica fails. Or did otter yeah. fail us? I guess. <laughs> Blame it on otter. Sure. That's all right. She can take the one damage for failing. Otter saw the deer and got distracted. Yep. All right. Moving on to Mr. Hemming or Gurolf. Yep. Yep. We're going to do Hemming. Gurolf. We'll do Hemming. Uno, dos. Chop some wood. And then I can use his ability to roll... Um, Four, unless I've got a support. Oh yeah. Right. Or can I support myself? No. No. You. You. I. Uh, I think Geralt is a support character. Oh yeah. Ten, but yeah, he is. So you do have a reward. Uh, reroll. True. Okay. So I'm gonna do four here. Well, hold up. Hold up. I gotta spend some resources. So if you're using your special ability, that's a morale. Oh yeah, you gotta spend. And, and then the question becomes, do we use a food to trigger your extra action here, or do we just use the token? Um, the token, right? It's like, I would say the token, yeah. Okay. Boom. So All I right. get an extra die? Uh, no. Yeah. No, um, you don't get an extra die. You, you get to roll, um, see what, with the courage and wine gives you what? Four. Um, give him four, yeah. yeah. Swap his valiance with his defense. All right, so he gives yep. you a four dice, and uh, you just get a reroll. One reroll because of Geralt. Yeah. Okay. Plus another reroll. Nope. Nope. Okay. Just one reroll. Yep. Which you yeah. might as well use it, right? Sure. Yeah. More wood. Yeah, so just reroll it. You only got your side. Were you gonna say unless? Unless what? You don't want more wood, Corey? <laughs> all right, I got okay. I got all these woods coming. There's the answer to your question. I think we found the traitor. Yeah. Right. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless you don't want to have enough wood to light the fire. Oh, look at that! Seven <sighs> wood sitting in our bank. 
Yeah, I, I think like we're that. good to go. We don't need to be we don't yeah. need, need to be doing any more wood chopping. Boom. Okay, that was Gerald. Yep. No, that was Hemming. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now we've got either Oslog or um, Petronia. So uh, let's see. Where's Petronia? She's in cover. Okay, right this now. is what I'm gonna do. Nor, I'm gonna give Nor. I'm, I'm, I'm crying havoc, and I'm gonna let slip the dogs of war. So I'm going to, to take Petronia and move her up there to which I'm going to say give Nor that um, extra action and I'm going to go ahead and uh, say go get them bro perfect for a couple of reasons uh, whenever Nor takes a wound you gain, we gain one morale, so that's a plus, because he's he's ready for Valhalla. He's also a loner, which means that he's going to get an additional die, so he's going to roll four dice uh, against um, this uh, bad guy up here, uh, which could probably get him a wound. Um, there's just a, there's a lot of pluses to sending him into battle by yep. himself. So um, that's that's my ideology behind giving him that uh, extra action. So wow. how about this swan song? Yeah, right. this swan song is good too. It's not really applicable yet, but if you send him up there by himself, it might be. It might be right. applicable. <laughs> <laughs> so go. that's it for Petronia. Now I just need uh, someone to perhaps reveal this threat for me. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Well, that's 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 one way to do it. Inkful <laughs> could do that. I was I was thinking just having him run in there and have it ambush him. That's what I was thinking. Ah. That, that, that's more what Nor was doing. But ah, having Ingvold I see. send having Ingvold send Inga in there, nah, wouldn't be a bad idea either. Yeah, because but... then. Then we don't have to worry about him taking a wound. But, you know, the closer he gets to Valhalla, the better. Yeah. The, the, the more useful he is. That's true. I'm, I mean, now that we have this... Or no, we don't have an abundance of food. But we have... Unless you want to eat wood chips. We only have five more out now. So I don't know. I, got, I don't mind yeah. using my... I don't mind using Inga if you want me to, John. I suppose it doesn't matter. I guess I didn't even think about just running in there and seeing what happens. If that's what what if that that's what we would be doing. Anyway. I mean, it's more thematic that way. I can't see anyway. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm gonna just pray again because Ingvold's pissed. Her prayer didn't work last time, so <laughs> she's pissed at these wilds gods, whatever his the wilds gods name is. All right, so I get to roll three die, and I need two success. Let's go. Oh, All right, yeah. there oh, we yeah. go. Successful prayer. So we now can do Call of the Wild. And we go. if this hero then it's okay. Yeah, so no, I'm not, but. So that's Ingold's turn. All right. So no one can run in there. All right, let's do it. One, two. Okay, so that what happens here is that that causes an Ooh. ambush. So Nor is going to take a wound that he can't defend himself against. Just one, not two. Well, just well. Oh no, I'm sorry. Does it have the two thing on there? Yeah. Yeah. So he takes two. Perfect. Good. Um, he, he takes <laughs> Perfect. two. So now, <laughs> so we get one morale for that because he took at least one. But it's during the hostiles phase. Oh, that's true. Or am I not supposed to say that? Sure. <laughs> trying to help you guys out. You just, you just, 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 keep, just keep roadblocking me with the rules here. Come on. Uh, so there you have that. And so now he has that extra action. He can. There we go. I can, can roll. Have at it. 
Or uh, we got to put a guy out there, I suppose. Got to have something to fight. There we go. Boom. Yes, that's true. All right. Big monster guy. And I get to attack. Yep. For four. That's correct. And, whoops. How did I get Oops. that? Well, don't count that one. <laughs> or maybe that's do count fine. that one. Here, I'll just select these four. There we go. Oh. That was even worse. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how to roll dice. John. That, it's, you know, it's a basic function. Yeah. Of, um, right. Most uh, mini games. So, but. But. What do you say? So you'll, you'll get the hang of it. Don't go playing craps. Don't so my so question bad. is, I could rage out. <laughs> yeah, rage out. Yeah. The question is, if yeah. I rage, can I put the double damage on rage and then not have rage in the future? Yes. Let's do that. Because I need okay. my loner to roll four dice, because clearly I need that. And now if I fail, well, that's life. Hey, I got a hit. You got one hit. Okay, so you got one hit. So that puts a wound over here on the card. Blink. Perfect. So they're not dead, but they do. They're they're halfway there. We slowed them down. All right, that's yep. Nor's turn. Lemon and a pear. Just full of song tonight. Yes, aren't we? That's it's heavy. It's yeah. It's how. <laughs> it's too bad no one knows any good uh, Viking shanties. <laughs> <laughs> What can you do with the drumkin sailor? What can you do if I get fighting? <laughs> Actually, I think that is one of theirs, isn't it? No. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see. That was Nor. So now we're back to Geralt. And Geralt, Geralt. is out here. Um, oh, boy. Kitty cat. Kitty cat. Has Brody gone yet? Nope. Okay, good. Because he's going to have to light the fire. Otherwise, we're going to lose two extra morale. He is the fire guy. Right? I mean, he's a blacksmith. He's doing blacksmith things on that fire. You could just move yes. back, I guess, and not take a damage. That would be a good idea, since Geralt only has uh, four hit points. Move back into the fire pit here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's Geralt, and now Oslog is going to... Go ahead and yes. move to up here, and that'll that'll flip this little guy. So we need to read K two seventy two. All right, two seventy two says a crumbling wooden shack forms a mound of debris and tangled assorted objects. Some are broken, others have simply disintegrated under the onslaught of cold and the passage of time. Carefully, you clear away this tottering heap to gather up anything useful. So we can perform, I can perform a perception test mm. with a difficulty of two. Yeah. And uh, Oslog's perception two. is two. So I get to roll two dice. And good luck. I have to get try to get two. And I don't. So nothing happens. Oh, um, something so if uh, you succeed, you can draw an item card. Nothing else happens. Um, Put in play special action card four, search the ruins. So that's this card right here. And then we also have uh, this little guy that comes over uh, here. Okay. And now anybody can come over here and search the ruins. Oh. And if if you do find something, you get to take a remains card. Nice. Um, so just to give you guys what an example of what it is, because I don't know if anybody's going to have time to come back over here and do this. If you look at these remains cards, they're simply just things that are... Uh, basically one-time uses because they're half broken anyway. So if you right. use them once, they're not going to be usable anymore. So for example, this one says that you can uh, only use it. Uh, this one right here says that you can only use it in combat and it's a helmet. It's a broken helmet, but it will give you protection. And what protection does, if you look at, I believe it's uh, Brody uh, protection says that when you perform a defense test, you roll an additional die. Um, so the helmet will give you an additional die in defense. This uh, axe over here, again, it's one-time usage. Um, so you can throw it um, and get, getting the shoot one ability, which means that you just use your valiance and it's one hex away. Or you can use it in melee to get a plus one to your combat. 
uh, skill, okay. your values. I like that. All right, so it's it's stuff like that, and and they just kind of you know here's a shield that gives oh, yeah, you dodge, shield. which which gives you the ability to use the um, cover side of the dice oh, yeah. uh, in in addition as a success. Um, so it's just different stuff like that. Cool. That's all these are. Cool. Yeah, I really like that axe where you can use it in combat or throw it. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's what all these things do. So that's that's why you would want to possibly maybe come over here and do that. Um, those would be oops. Uh, those would be uh, items. Each character has three item slots, so they can carry three items at a time. Um, and then if you get a fourth one, you'd have to decide if you want to switch one of the other ones out, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Perfect. So that was Oslong's turn then. One action moving up there. So then who do we have left? Frody. Yep. Yep, Frody. Frody, Frody. Okay. Oh, oh uh... Come on, Brody, I like that fire. I am going to do that. All right, I'm throwing the wood out of here. Uh, work on this. Or. Yeah. <laughs> Unless. All right. I okay. think that's everyone. That's everyone. So. Um. Okay. So that's is that we have a bad guy spawning on a so we do We're that gonna have to do something there. about that and then we also have a uh quarry token spawning on b oh yeah perfect which is right there oh, my bird comes out and then we just have to lose one morale So now we're down to four, and oh wait a minute, <laughs> we didn't do. Uh, oh yeah, do the guy. The hostiles. So the oh. hostiles, he has a one move, right? That sucks. So he moves before you die, and then nothing happens. Now. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Well, not necessarily because on on uh, <laughs> on um, on Nor's next turn. Uh, well, he can't because he has rage, but he, he doesn't have rage anymore. But but he he could have literally moved in there, and if rage would have still been active, he could have raged, done his attack, taken his fourth hit point, and then spent a morale and done swan song swan song oh, to right. take another action as well. Um, that's kind of the combo that that Nor can can pretty much rock on. Nice. But, no, he just died in cold. Yeah, it just doesn't work this way. No, he doesn't die. He just gets knocked out. He, he's, he's not dead. Yeah, it'll be fine. Which, Don't worry about it's it. It's kind of sad for Nor. Yeah, yeah this blind for... guy in the cold just, like, unconscious out there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All, right. All right. So uh, now we are back to losing morale. Uh, we already did that. Now you need to check to see if your characters are in a forest hex or not. If they are not, they'll take a wound. So I think both of mine are in non-forested hexes. Yeah, both of mine so were as are well. We are both Vermont. taking a wound. Okay, you, Nick. Both your guys are safe. Ah, uh, they're smart. Yeah, yeah. You're smart. We're getting the job done. That's just how. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I work, I'm building a fire over here. <laughs> he, he builds playing religiously. Like we're <laughs> these are important actions. All right. So, oh, um, Oslog. Yeah, I already did that. Oslog. So everybody's taking their wounds if they need it. Oh, yep. did, did Nor take a wound? Yep, he is. He is oh, down snap. to zero. So he's out. Yes, he's that's what I, out. That's what I was saying. Snap doodles. He's sleeping. <laughs> That's fine. He's just taking a nap. He's fine. He'll be fine. All right. So what we'll have to do there is we'll have to just um. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. He's just fine. napping. He's okay. He's fine. He's fine. Um. All right. That's that. And 
we need to advance the marker here and another event. Oh, this looks Somebody good. Can read that. Go for it, Nick. Or I got it. it. Scapegoat. Faced with the magnitude of the disaster, your leader loses his temper and takes it out on one of you, much to that person's astonishment. But admonitions are sometimes a good thing. The poor devil is now much more energetic. All right. So the yeah. scout designates another active hero. This hero suffers one wound and gains the following bonus token. Well, it's, uh, it's the leader, not the yeah, scout. The leader. Oh, okay. Yeah, Yeah, the leader. Um, so they get designated what now? They designate another active hero. They and take a wound, and yeah, they take yeah. a wound, and then they also Basically get a plus one. Basically, someone in a free action. So they get a plus one action. Um, I'm going to... Let's see, where's Brody? Brody's there. Ooh. Yep. I'm going to do it. The queen is going to slap Brody and say, get your butt out there and fight something. Seems fair. Um, so, okay, Petronia. <laughs> so there's your wound. You can decide which box you want to put it on. Um, or the slap in the face. It's it's more, you know, it didn't really hurt him. That's more of an emotional wound um, than anything else. But it still counts, unfortunately. Um so that's that for that. And now we each have one action. We can spend food to get an additional action during the hero's phase. Okay, so um, we're up to Erica. So Erica can... Shoot, I suppose would be the best op Or, well, no. Uh, you got this, or you got this over here. So theoretically, Frodo can deal with either, I suppose, but it probably behooves me to discover the bottom one with the eagle. Yeah. Otherwise, it's gonna it's gonna move too. Yep. And then I can potentially take a free shot at it. So. Right. Let's do that. Oh now, God! Good luck. I get four dice. <laughs> I mean, you can get three dice on one. So good luck with this. <laughs> All right. All right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm worrying. I'm all right. Oh my <laughs> gosh, how is that possible? <laughs> I just knew this would not go well. What in oh. the world? Are these dice? I think they're shenanigans. Oh, they're loaded. They're loaded. <sighs> you know, you've got those things on Otter's eyes that falconers use, don't you, to keep the keep the bird... Oh, yeah, oh you're I'm supposed to take that off. off. Yeah. yeah the you blind. forgot to take it off. You just yeah. threw Otter up into the air. He's flying blind through the countryside. Ooh. Well, good thing I didn't take a shot at the other guy, because that would have been just as embarrassing. Yeah. yeah I'm not even going to try to spend anything. I'm just going to be like, Erica, you know what? You just, you need a timeout, Erica. Yep. Yeah. Sit in the corner, think about what you did. Good night in the morning. Look <laughs> at that. Okay. Well, that's Erica's turn, so um, we have either Geralt or Hemming. I mean, would it be worth spending the food, though, to redo that, or no? Mm, prime. No, because I can't redo that. You can't. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can't redeploy, but you could take a shot. Yeah, we got Brody. Do you still have... No, no, you can't, because it's a it's a threat token. Never mind. Yeah. You, can't, you can't do it again. No, oh, but you could shoot here. I could okay. shoot the other guy. But we got yeah, everyone else could. up. We got everyone else over there. I was going to say, I don't know if I'm... Erica is a failure, and I don't want to roll more dice and embarrass myself. <laughs> so well, it's good, it's good to hear that you're not down on yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's sure. right. You haven't succumbed to depression, nope. so that's good. No. Nope. All right. So um, either Geralt or Hemming is up next. Well, I feel like I need to take on my support role. I just don't know how to support right now. You can. Um. For for who? Well, I mean, for either um, of well, us. Well, if you or... can get if you can get Hemming, if you can get Hemming over here, I could have Erica. I'm sorry, um, Oslog search 
over here, and that will give me a reroll to try to reveal this token. And then if I do uh, reveal him, I believe, let me see, she's got a special ability, what is it? Uh, cunning. Uh, she can move one area and perform a ranged attack in the order of your choice. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with... Um, Mm, yeah, that doesn't really help much. We do need to discover that token, though, Grant. Yeah, we do. This yeah. could be a turn for Ralph the Hound, too, potentially. Ralph? Yeah, that's a that's another possibility. I mean, he just doesn't. Um, he has an agility of three. He won't be able to attack. Oh right. But they would stop their abilities. They would stop. Um, moving which is huge so yeah i could definitely send rolf over this way if he's still attacking or i could send him down here uh he has a three he has a three range so that would be oh one, right two, three i could do that i could do that okay so you could move so, so I mean, we, we don't really necessarily need to worry about this one yeah now that Erica has failed us. I mean, you could move Hemming to the other shadow thing if Frody's going to go there. Yeah. Because then be. he could be a reroll for his attack, right? Yep, yep, yep. That's right. a good idea, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'll move over there. I was going to say, I could I could light the fire down here, too, but... Yeah, you can do that at the end. Yeah. The wino stumbles up to the yeah. apparition, <laughs> thinking he's another newcomer to yeah. the tribe. <laughs> Hey, buddy! Uh, <laughs> Did you see a real bright light? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So that's Gar um, That's Hemming. So now it's either uh, Oslog or Petronia. I'll go ahead and do what I said I was going to do with Petronia. Um, the only thing is that Rolf eats a ton of food. He eats two. Whoops. And we only have two left. No, we oh, got no. three. I was messing with one. All right, so let's go ahead and just move the two off then. That leaves us with one. That sends Rolf over here. Well, would it And good? I can search with a thing of two. Um, and I would need to get uh, two successes. So it is so kind of a toss-up, but still. Yeah, it is. A mean-looking dog. Oh. Nope. That's a nope, but um, I think it works. Nope. It's threats or hostiles, so that threat is not going to move. But is um, it the, only the weaker threat ones? Hmm? Is it just the weaker threat ones? Uh, like, does uh, it say that? I mean, I'm just looking at the It way. is, it is. Or am I not supposed to say that? <laughs> no, no, you're good, you're good. Yeah. I'm just, I'm reading the words, I'm forgetting to look at the symbol. My bad. Um... But yeah, no, that that sucks. So waste. Anyway, he just yeah. ate our food. He our, ate the food. Our animals are not doing well. Our companions. No, they are not. They are not doing well at all. So. Well, I mean, you guys speak for yourselves. Ingman has been a very good owl. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow! 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 Okay, um, that's straight, straight all I can do. We only had one action, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. That sucks. Okay. Um, that's that. So we go to either Frody or Ingle. So I was originally thinking of throwing my owl that way, um, but then we would be completely out of food. But that's all right. Uh, and then I also have been thinking, of course, trying to send Frody towards the big bad. But so I don't know which makes sense first. We've got the call of the um, wild bear too. Maybe the big bad first, just to see what this. Because if we kill him, then we read another paragraph. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. That's a good idea. Okay, so first Don't action is move. And then, so his ability, or, oh, yeah, so for our morale, which we have four, uh, I Watch attack to nearby hostile, reducing their defense by one until the end of the attack, which sounds like, I guess I can use my free action first to see if I get the kill and then decide yeah. on it. Is yes, and then you, if, if you need to, then if you I can spend to. the morale mm -hmm. to do that. Okay, so I'm going to use my free action, action for an attack, which um, means... 
So you're going to get four dice. I just get four dice and yeah, that's and, it. And Hemming grants combat to nearby heroes. Oh. So that gets five. You, you know, get five support. Dice. Okay. And you also get a support. You, you and also I get, get support. That's correct. Damn, okay. Oh, jeez, Brody, come on. You've been sitting by that warm fire. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Do, Do something. Oh, oh okay, yeah, there you go. go. Got him. Mm -hmm. All right, you don't even need to reroll. So no. that's cool. So he's out, and somebody read that paragraph. What number is it? 234. You delivered a significant blow to the ghost with yeah, you did. Frody's hammer. <laughs> but you feel that atmosphere is still thick. The walking curse is still around somewhere. The crows are all flapping their wings to confirm it. Continue the effort. Uh, Heal Albert objective marker one step forward. I just, yep, I just did that. Okay, cool. And we gain him for Al. That's good. Well, yeah, I'll throw that on the file. And then discard this hostile card and reveal the next hostile card. Uh oh, uh oh. Shadow level four, three. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. So basically, it's the same, uh, except that you got four Stronger. combat, four defense, and now their agility is two as well. Oof. Um. So. Now they have Predator and Evasive. Evasive simply means that even if they move into a hex where somebody is, they're going to continue moving uh, until they reach their full agility, and they're going after Alvar. So, uh, for example, with this one here, let's say if Oslog was here, he would simply move straight through. Okay. Makes so sense. This guy is this guy technically here then, right? No, this guy's still here right now. Um, no, I'm looking, sorry, I'm, I'm at the board thing. Like, I'm saying this is here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've just been, I've just been playing. I, know, I was just there, wondering, so. because, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, then, then I don't need to use my, yeah, and then I don't need to use my ability, that's good. Even though we got, and we got an extra morale too, so it was like a win-win. Yeah. All right. So it is good. Now we just have this guy to contend with. So. Yeah. So with Noor, how does uh, getting un or conscious again work? Is it just like healing it, like normal? With, with Noor, you basically stand up and you, you would heal one of your things and you can stand right back up. Okay. And that's my action then? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Well, that's easy. I can I can live with that. See, he was just taking a nap. He's yeah. fine. He's fine. And now He's somehow he might... So no, not cr not quite ready for Valhalla, are you? Now? Actually, we're gonna do this he, other well, way. He's, you know, he's got he's got that head wound that's that's still bleeding, but he's all Only right. Only a flesh wound. Not today. That's right. It's just a scratch. <laughs> and now we have our little buddy, Geralt. Mm. Geralt better light that fire. That's yeah. I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> thinking about it. That's it. <laughs> Where's the matches? <laughs> my rank is like level one so <laughs> yeah. not very smart he's like negative one look I found people. this black powder over here what does it do do I like it <laughs> God, it looks tasty <laughs> <laughs> well we have fire boys alright fire it is so I think um, now it comes back to Oslog and what is your perception not very great. Only two. That's not really a good idea. Uh, I think I'm just going to move Oslog over here. Mm -hmm. For her action. Um, because the perception, I could try to reveal that. But you know, probably not going to work out too well. Yeah. What is it? Two? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Oh, Just because, Sam. you know, moving. Well, no, look, see, I, I can, I can, um, I can search an adjacent area. Oh, right. For, to reveal this guy. And if I reveal him, Rolf is still there. So he's going to hold him there anyway. But now we'll be able to attack him before he actually is able to get to where Albert is. Right. But Rolf so, won't because of his, right? Huh? Rolf will not be able to attack because he's already been activated. But he won't be able to uh, but even if he, he even if he hasn't been activated, 
um, it's a predator, so he won't attack it anyway. We we have to get our heroes to attack it, not not any of our characters. But I was saying it would still move because it's only for the level one cost already. Right? Yes, yes, yes. You're correct. You're correct. But I just realized now for Inga's owl too, it would it would be the same situation where I wouldn't be able to do anything with Inga. Yeah. Oh man, you know what? This is kind of bad. How much morale do we have? Uh, five. Not much. We got enough. We got five. Yeah. And we're not going to lose any at the end of the turn. <laughs> Oh, that's true. No effect. Oh. It's going to get it's a little dicey. And I did decide to light the fire, so we're good there. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. We're pushing it close, but I'm okay with living on the edge. Yeah. Yeah, you are with those dice rolls. Yeah. <laughs> Donkey on the edge. That's why we're on the edge. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty much. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to try to reveal it. Just, uh... Because I don't, I don't, I mean, even though it doesn't matter, at least he'll be revealed for sure. And then if it's not, oh, Inga, right. Inga can try. So, Ooh. we'll see. I think Ryan's in here watching us. Oh. Yeah, I sent him the link. That's a miss. Okay. That's a miss. So, nothing, nothing there. So, so no joy. Does it make sense? It makes sense now for me to try out Inga, right? Yep. One morale, one morale, one food, right? Yes. So we're uh, starving now. But Perfect. no, we're not starving. We're just we're out of. Uh, I don't have, yeah, out I only have three. Full bellies, but out of food. All right. Here we go. Come on, Inga. Oof. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Got it. All right, so Ooh. that one comes off. <clears throat> Great. So Inga's done. Or Inga was done. We know what we've and got. And that's it for everybody, right? All right, so yep. now threats move and attack that are none. Hostiles move and attack, so this hostile has two. Oh, no. Oh, I, I missed that part. Okay. That's not good. And they come in there. <laughs> um, now, uh, we are going to lose two morale because that shadow is in Albert's place. Ooh. That's all so right. We are getting we are getting pretty close. Um, wait, did you already lose one? No, I didn't. I, I didn't we had five. Any. We did have five. We did because my owl. Yeah. Right? Oh, snap. Oh, we're down okay. to two. That's all right. We're just yeah. triggering the lower than three text story. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> we yeah, wanted to. Great. We wanted to know what it was. Well, uh, some of us wanted to know what it was. Other of us <laughs> oh, knows what it is. Oh, and are not excited. excited. <laughs> One sixty. All right, Mister okay. Owl Person, you get to read this. <laughs> <laughs> Beware. Your greatest strength is the cohesion and morale strength that has kept you alive so far. If you give up now, failure is waiting for you. So stop sucking is what I yeah, said. Yeah, don't fail. That, that's pretty much, hey, stupid, pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're okay. So We're okay. That, is, that is that. We don't have an, effect, we don't have an end effect for uh, the end phase. So that's all good. We come up here. We uh, move over to round six, and now um, we need to choose a uh, scout. Oh, one, all of your one more question, quick. Here. Would it also yeah, attack Geralt? Oh, yeah. Huh? Would the big bad shadow attack Geralt? No. Okay. No, it, it's just going to, it's, it's, it's affecting Alvar. It moves to where Alvar is. Okay, but it doesn't attack anyone. But then, what, yeah, so when would it use its attack? If, for example, if it was further than two hexes away, let's say that it was over here instead. Yep. And it moved its two. One, two. Oh, gotcha. Alvar isn't yep. here, so it's going to attack the person that gotcha. it can. That's smart. Yeah, that's what yep. I'm Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it just happened. It just so happened that, that uh, he's here. Alvar is there, so instead we just lose two around. Yeah. <sighs> Also um, not good. Also not good. That is correct. All right. 
So we've moved the turn marker. We just need to flip. Uh, oh, we need a. Who, who's gonna go? Who's gonna be scout? Oh, we get to put another token on A, right? Uh, yes, that's correct. Boom. All right. So I'm sooner or later. Eric has got to come out of her funk, right? Um, you would hope. Sooner or later. You would think so. Um, She's due. Okay, so we're just going to keep her as the scout. Let her go first. And uh, then we'll flip over this card. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. Oh, I don't like this. We already don't have food. I, I see a lot of text. Oh, I see a lot of bread. It's a devouring hunger. Sam's hand is in my way. What does that say? Drawing one oh, of your sorry. last resources. That's right. Drawing on your last resources to brave appalling conditions, you experience an overwhelming, overwhelming desire to devour the meager provisions you have left to calm yourself. Famished, you turn to the one who shouts the loudest, hoping that he will allow you this frugal comfort. Okay. What? What token? <clears throat> Excuse me. Is that the leader token? Yeah. Okay, the leader token applies one of the following effects for each active hero, starting with the scout. All right, so here are the things. Each hero is either going to do one of these two things. The hero suffers one wound, or the hero has to spend one <laughs> if there's at least one in the available pool. We well, don't have any of those, uh, yeah. so guess what everybody gets to do? Take the Take damage. And well, that makes it very simple. I like it. Yeah. And Noor's oh, going back to sleep. <laughs> Noor's going... Okay, here's the he, he thing. He woke up hungry. We didn't have food for him. <laughs> so this is, we actually right. lose the morale from that, though. Oh, oh dear. Great. Oh, no. So, um, no, stop, that's not good. Stop losing morale. Yes, stop losing morale. That's always a good, good uh, mantra. <laughs> Who's been using their bird so much? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We may have lost guys. Yeah. Oops, I keep well, moving stuff. No, we're not going to lose this. No, we got, we got this it. In the bag. We Beat got that this shadow. Because this little shadow is about to get rained so on. Lose the morale every time a character goes unconscious. Oh, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Delete that. Okay. <laughs> The wind is really blowing tonight. I may have made a mistake, and yes, we may or may not have just lost this scenario. But... <laughs> I don't know what. Yeah, There's a lot of wind out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so where are we at? We have moved that. We moved. Okay, we've done this. Everybody took a wound. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. So um, now. We each are going to get one action. So. No food. Yeah, there's no food, so we all get one action. So this is the, this is the bee's knees right here. This is down to brass tacks. Mm -hmm. So, so can, go ahead. Can Erica shoot at the shadow, even though he's at this building place? Y yes, it doesn't block line of sight going in, okay. just if you're passing. Through it. Does it give cover? No. No, the 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 hostiles never benefit from the cover. Okay. Okay. Well then, this is it. This is her chance. She's gonna shoot her five dice because she's got three time time, plus her accuracy plus her special ability. Which I hope Well No, uh, that's only four. Um she would have to have Otter in there to get the fifth. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's only if I roll the Jormunger yeah, symbol. Yeah. Well, anyway. well, yeah, yeah. Which I'm more likely to roll that than a hit. So you still you should you should you should yeah. Well, let's see. We'll see. All right. Whew. Okay. Here we go. Lots of hits. All right. There we go. That's a good start. A good start. Got some exploding dice. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, that's better than I normally do. <laughs> Progress. Well, from maybe, but you, 
Erica normally fails, and you just failed again, so technically... Yep. <laughs> not better, not than, better than you normally do. On the upside, we have a bunch of other people around, so you know what? They you can just, deal with it. You just failed better. <laughs> yeah. Than you. I failed less bad. Such a positive person. Yep. <laughs> oh, bother. No. Okay. Why bother? Yep. <laughs> So now we've got right, Mr. So that was, Rolf and That was Emmy. Erica's whiff. Good job. Yep. Um, so uh, you got Geralt or Hemming. And. Yeah. Wow. They're both terrible. <laughs> but you can at least move Hemming to the thing. And the more supports we get there. Yeah, we need more supports. The better it'll be for Mr. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, shoot. Brody. Brody. And Gareth was, is already there. Oh, yeah, we only have one. We have no, no action. Program. But bear with yeah, me. We're... This is like... Wait, but I have Frenzy, which is pretty fast. This is... Yeah. Oh, yeah, you could do that. Or... Oh, no, we need it. Oh, no, we need morale. Bear with me here. Odin Wrath, or whatever they would say. If Hemming moves to the camp, <laughs> and Petronia moves to Frody's spot, Frody can get an extra action. To then move yes. and attack. Oh, yeah, we need Petronia's extra action. That's exactly what we need. All right, well, um, have Geralt at least, I don't know. Do his there turn. is a double success size of the dice. It's possible for him to roll double, double successes. This could be another Jorvik right. situation. It <laughs> could be. It could be. It happened last game. It could happen this game. Do Where is Hemming? He's up at the one spot right here. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll we'll attack with Geralt. Geralt the Madman. Or, or you could still move Hemming first, and then next time around, Geralt will have a reroll. That's true. That's true. I'm trying to maximize everything because no, that, makes... would, that would be maximizing it more. Would yeah. be maximizing. You're right. Let's do it. You're right. All right. Yeah, Hemming. get all those guys in there. All right, so now it's uh, either Oslog or Oslog. Petronia. So it's going to have to be Petronia. She will uh, move here and say, Frody, go get him. Frody. Um, so Frody. give Frody an extra action. <clears throat> Does Garelf have this plus die, this plus one die action too? Oh yeah, that's from a long time ago. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, so he, he would actually be able to roll three dice and get a reroll uh, because go. Hemming is there. Yeah. Perfect. Everything's perfect now. Let Frody and fail then, first. And yeah. then, yeah, Frody could move in there. Frody will get uh, four. Plus. He would get four dice. And he'd have a reroll from Daryl. Yeah, but it makes sense for me to move in Ingvog first, so she is her support. Oh man, you're really trying to max, right? Hemming yeah. Hemming's right. also giving you a support and okay. an extra so, die too. Speaking of sp stacking limits, yeah, does this guy count? Does this guy count? Or how are we doing with that? Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. Um, Alvar Al Alvar doesn't count, but the bad guy does. Okay, so, so we can we have that, two more people. Are we saying four, five, or six? Yeah, exactly. It, it's um, I'm pretty sure it's uh, I left my uh, what page it is. You can assume it's five. I'm pretty sure it's six, though. I I don't think it's five. Oh, gotcha. Um, uh oh, what did I do? I mean, there may or may not already be an asterisk on this game, so let's no, just say no some. asterisks. No, no. No, there, no. There's why would there be an asterisk? <laughs> uh oh, my game's lagging. I don't know. What's yeah, my game is kind of lagging too. Oh, oh it must be the. I bet it's the rule book loading. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, pass. Oh, here we go. This might. This area can accommodate. Right, tokens can be placed in this area. So a. Oh. There you go. This yeah. marking, what marking is missing? Six miniatures in threats. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. So I so, was right. Six. Ingvold's gonna come in here with her pot of 
mystery. <laughs> yeah, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> we don't want to know. It's beef stew, boys! <laughs> it's, yeah, it's our supporting beef stew for the fight to come. <laughs> All right, so Dwarf's turn. He's... And he can only stand up, so I'll heal a wound. Just one bite and Kiros, what ails you? <laughs> and there we go. We got a we got a Nor. Nor can at least. I was he's gonna say watch what's happening, but he's right? not gonna well, yeah. be able to. The watch. only problem with that is if it's breathed on the wrong way, we lose. But that is true. All right, <laughs> so that's good. that's Nor. <laughs> hey, I'm back. All right, so that's Nor. So now we come back to uh, Geralt or Hemming. So Geralt, yeah, gets three dice for an attack. If you spend yep. this token, yeah. And he can reroll two of them. Perfect. Let's get these out of the way. And you actually get combat, so you get one extra die. Oh, oh what? Yeah, from Hemming. Hemming. God, hey, you're so tough. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Stop telling the bard that. <laughs> yeah. Now he's only going to sing tales of his own deeds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I gave him combat and saved the day. <laughs> you all ready? Oops. Yeah, roll it. Here we go. Two rerolls, right? Okay, two rerolls, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 The bard is better than the warrior. Oh, 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 all right. No, huh? no, that's no. nothing. Oh, I need four. No. Yeah, and he only takes one wound, one. so. No. Right. no, no. Well, he tried. No David and Goliath this time. Uh, I was thinking three the whole time. Danger reared its ugly head, Sir. Sir Robin <laughs> bravely turned and fled. And now we've got Oslo. Right. Oh, you're welcome, guys. All right, so that was Geralt. Um, Back to Oslog. Oslog doesn't really have anything she can do. She's okay. got to shoot one. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. She's got to shoot one. That won't do any good. Um, yeah. There's just not a whole lot she can do right now. Because I can't use her ability. Her ability would actually do, do us some good, but we just don't have the morale for her to use it. Right. Um, so we'll just roll our two dice and see if we can reveal that other thing over there. Oh, yep. And, nope, that doesn't even work. So, that's it for her. Alright, everything so it comes Brody, to this moment. The last person. Alright, Nick, All it's right. your birthday. So I hope you have the luck for this. Yeah, I know, this is... So I get um, oh wait, so yeah, first move in, in. For my first action. Then I'm get in there, kid. Let's win one for the kipper. <laughs> Drinking up. I'm gonna have a little sip of uh, Aunt Ingold's tasty beef stew. Sipping on gin and juice. <laughs> Listening to uh, the Bard's music. All right. I get an extra die. Right for combat. Yep. Yes. Do I have any other combat modifier? Frenzy. And you'll be oh. able to re-roll three dice. Well, three? three dice. Yep. Yeah, three because, support characters. Geralt, yeah, three support characters are there. Teamwork. No, you Take two. Teamwork right. makes the dream work, baby. <laughs> All right, Nick. Are you ready? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, three, my. Three. Goodness. Not a good start, but three re rolls. We'll do this wait, one. Is Frody, is Frody, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is Frody a Norse character? Frody's a Norse character, right? Yep. Okay, that Yorman Gondor? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he got yeah, two. two Gondors, right? Yep. Okay, so that's three hits. You only yep. you, you get to, you get to re roll these two, and you need Ooh. one more hit. So, can I continue? Do I have three rerolls so I can even reroll one of these? Is that how that would work? Yes. Uh, I'm going to make an executive decision and say yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Black, 
Okay, well, win. this better be this better be a victory. Uh, All right, so let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> yeah, let's go we'll ahead see. and read. Let's read. Let's read two eighty before we two eight zero. That is correct. There you go, Nick. The ghost vanishes forever in a stream. The crows are still there. They're waiting. Albar utters a rant of relief. Could this? Could his ills have disappeared along with those messengers of the dead? Remove all threats and hostiles from the board. And we'll move the heal Alver objective marker one step forward. Ooh, and it reveals another reading thing. Yep, that's another, another paragraph, which is paragraph 120... 123. 123, yeah. All right, here we go. <clears throat> you cast suspicious glances at your own brothers in arms. Ooh, the ghosts have been dispelled, but some of their words still disturb you. The one you poisoned. Alvar was poisoned? Who poisoned him? When was he poisoned? How was he poisoned? The snap of their beaks, louder than ever, the ebony silhouettes of the birds sway with the branches on which they're resting, swayed by a strong north wind. When an empire is to fall, the attacker is careful not to attack its walls, but destroys it from the inside, Alvar says as he painfully gets up. Your leader is up again. He is looking at each of you with a clear and deep gaze. Let's not let the venom of suspicion threaten our clan. Those creatures could have said anything to make us bend. What have you learned, brothers? He finally uh, said. If find your clan objective objective marker is in a dark, dark square. square. Else is it? Find, oh, it is in a it dark is. square. Oh, oh yeah. You asked about this, square. yeah. I did ask yeah. about that. <laughs> All right. Well, my thing. All right. Okay. <laughs> 256. The crows take flight and disappear, and amidst the winds of a growing anarchy arises he who dares. With his conquering axe, Alvar strikes the stone on which he has taken up position. All eyes are fixed upon him. All mouths are closed. Heda, I narrowly escaped your embrace of death. From the depths of my bed, tortured by fevers and nightmares, I could do nothing but observe the ravages that the gods rain down upon our clan. Are we alone down here, left to ourselves? Have they turned their benevolent gaze away from our fleet? Is this punishment for having trodden these lands? I know your minds are occupied with these fears. They haunt us and weaken us. Thus, I, Alvar, return to you, saved from a pernicious evil, from a dark substance which coursed through my veins. Fate has given me this final opportunity. Now is not the time for panic. For crows and worms, I will not pardon any sign of rebellion. Our numbers do not permit it. Let us stand together in the face of these trials. Let us rebuild this camp, make it our haven, and let us go and seek out those for whom we have fought so hard in these treacherous waters and cursed lands. To arms, my brothers! To arms! Albert the Conqueror. Nice. 230. Holy crap. <laughs> so right here is uh, Alvar the Conqueror. So Alvar the Conqueror is a, is a special ability card that oh. Alvar will now carry with him whenever Ooh. he's an active hero. Gotcha. And it gives him the ability to spend a morale, and once per turn, for a free action, if he spends the morale, Alvar gains the following bonus token. So you can get a plus one die token as long as he spends a morale if you do that. Mm, that's right. cool. All right, so that's a special ability that he has for the rest of the campaign. All right, uh, so now we read paragraph 230. All right, <clears throat> conclusion. After enduring these violent skirmishes against the living and what seemed to be the spirits of the dead themselves, silence fell again at the state camp. Fatigue wearies your aching muscles, but there is no question of giving in to despair and idleness. They are but the vile scouts of certain death. The scattered beams and planks planted, planted in the clay soil depict a real carnage. Some of them, however, are still in good condition and lead you to believe that it would be possible to rebuild the camp. As you slowly begin the necessary preparations for this initiative, you take a worried look at the edge of the dark forest that borders the area. Is this the realm of these messengers of chaos who are hiding deep in these woods at the end of the worlds? Your predecessors must have fled in that direction. Or have they all perished? Did, these, did those filthy natives capture them to satisfy some need for blasphemous sacrifices? If the questions seemed unanswered, one thing is certain. When the wind whistles between the trees, one could swear to hear, in the hollow of its whistles, cries of distress coming straight from the forest. To be continued in hell, the last song. Boom. There you go. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. So, um, 
just real quick, um, if we had not found out enough about the clan whereabouts, um, we would have got this instead, which uh, basically is another special ability card, but it plays into Alvar's psyche more than anything else. Because we found out so much about our clan, he's the conqueror. He wants to go forward. But if we had found out less about the clan, he would be suspicious about the people that were around mm. him who may or may not have actually poisoned him. And so um, instead of paying a uh, morale to get a plus one die token, he would have had to spend a wound in order to, at the end of Alvar's activation, if there's at least uh, two active heroes in his area, gain plus one morale. Oh, that's not pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still it's still useful, but it plays into he has to he has to take a wound in order to do that. Right. So it's it's a little bit riskier. I like it. But uh, that that gives you the idea of, of the, the the ways that the scenarios can have branching paths for the characters that kind of shape and mold mm-hmm. who yeah. they're becoming throughout the course of the campaign. Yeah, I like that. Cool. Yeah. So that's that. That is uh, that's uh, Hell the Last Saga, and uh, if you check out some of the updates on the Kickstarter page, uh, they we've been revealing some new mechanisms. Um, next week, I believe we're going to be releasing an update about uh, a pretty big update, if if I'm not mistaken, talking about uh, the prayer mechanism a little bit more. Oh, and nice. there's also going to be some some more updates on where we are with development. And uh, all of that kind of thing as, as well. So, but they just revealed another mechanism uh, oh, last last week, um, where it's a uh, gather action where you can go out and gather herbs, and then you can take those herbs to a healer. And then they can oh, make different kinds cool. of uh, potions. Uh, you know, potions for plus one combat, potions potions for healing, uh, that type of stuff. So it, it's a pretty neat mechanism. Yeah. So, in the pledge manager is still open, Sam? For yes, oh. pledge manager is still open. Um, they have said that it's going to be open until the end of February, um, but I I kind of think they're probably going to let it go longer than that. Uh, so, but no no end date has been determined yet. Okay. Okay. Cool. So we we haven't put a hard and fast date on it. In the past. They've simply said that it's going to be uh, the end of February, but I have a feeling they're going to let it uh, stay open longer than that because we we usually try to let it stay open as long as we can so that people can finance and uh, you know finance their funds and, and kind of um, be frugal as as far as how they pay for their their pledges and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the the hard and fast date is when we go to production. So. Um, that, that's when we can't accept any more orders. But uh, it's kind of open to uh, what we what we want to do. So they're they're usually pretty pretty gracious on the end of the pledge manager. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, I think that does it for this time around. Um, appreciate yeah. all of, all of you for watching either live or after the fact, and obviously yeah. for Sam Healy joining us and teaching us the game, and we really enjoyed both playthroughs. My pleasure. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you did. I'm yeah. glad you did. Really digging the Viking theme and the unique take on it. Um, yep. It's going to be fun to play Very this. So. A lot of cool mechanisms. Yep. So. Yeah. I like how the mechanisms just don't over overshadow the rest of the right. you know, right. narrative. Um, they yep. just kind of ate it, and I really enjoy it. I it really enjoy good, that. It always that, tells that. a good story, too, when you play through it. And it's like, yeah. That's what I think is fun, too. Yeah, yeah it is. It's really cool. Well, yeah. Thanks a lot, Sam. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Enjoy. Yeah, thanks. Have a good night. You too.